theyeshiva.net. Okay, good morning, everybody. Baruch Hashem, yesterday we had the schus to finish the Maimer, at least on one level, of Lekut HaTayr, the Parsha Shlach, the Maimer about Nesachim, the wine libations. So today, first I want to thank Rebbe Nechemia Kaplan for the ca- copies on such short notice. And welcome, everybody. Today's class is dedicated by Nancy Miller in honor of the Lubavitcher Rebbe on his yard site today, the third day of Tammuz. Thank you very much. So today we're going to learn a sicha from the Rebbe that he said 61 years ago, Shabbos Parshas Kairach Tovshin Chav Beis. That's 61 years ago? Yeah, 61 years ago. Um, 1962, it's published in Likutei Sichos, volume 4, Parshas Kairach, and in it, the Rebbe uh, presents a very powerful and profound and relevant take on the whole story of Kairach, as we shall see. Basically, it could be defined as when Judaism becomes technical and loses its soul, as we shall see. Okay, let's begin. It's in Yiddish, the way it was said, but I'll translate, especially those who don't understand Yiddish, I'll translate, don't worry. Aleph, a state in Seder Olam. Seder Olam is a sefer that chronicles, goes through the history of the Jewish people. It's known as Seder Olam Rabbah. And uh, as he says in footnote one, it's quoted in the Rajbam and Toisvus in Masechus Baba Basra of Kufyutes. What does it say there? As the Machloikis for Kodach Vadasay, if Moshe of Aaron is Fogakum and Noch the Maisa Hamadaglam. In Torah, it doesn't always doesn't say a time for everything. So, what's the time frame? Starts so Vayikach Kodach. Kodach staged this whole revolt against Moshe. When did it happen? So, Toisvus and the Rajbam and Baba Basra, and based on the Sedom, say it happened after the story of the spies. So it works actually with the parshas because Parsha Shlach is the story of the spies, and then comes Parsha's Kodach. They have a raya. Why? It's interesting. What was the complaint? What was the revolution against Moshe about? So first Kodach says, Madua Tisnasa. Why are you leaders? There shouldn't be leaders. Everybody is equal. Everybody is equal. Hashem rests among everybody. Why is there a concept of Tisnasu? Why is anybody exalted? Why is Moshe a leader? Why is Anna Kaingat? When you continue reading the story, it a little it changes a little bit. How do I know? Because Moshe tells Kairach and his people, isn't it enough that you're already Leviim and you serve in the Mishkan and Hashem chose you? gam kuhuna? You also want to be Kayanim? So in the beginning, Kairach says there should be no leadership. Suddenly, he wants to be a Kayan. So that's already the next, the, ne- the next layer. <laughs> I don't know if you say Lahavdl or not, but this is a famous book, Animal Farm, about communism. So the main over, the idea over there is George Orwell. Everybody is equal. In communism, everybody was equal. At some point they see it's not everybody is equal. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than other animals. <laughs> So Kairach says, no leadership. But then suddenly, he wants to be a Kayan. They all want to be Kayanim. And, uh, and Moshe says, do the Ktoiris, which is Kayanim. You read later, further, there's a third motivation. <laughs> and that's the proof here. Dasan and Avirim, they say something else. What's their, what's they, Moshe says, I want to speak to you. What do they say? Af loyal eret zavuz chalavu You made a promise. You're taking us out of the Gehenna of Mitzrayim and taking us to a beautiful country, a land that flows with milk and honey. You never delivered. You never delivered. Moshe Rabbeinu Zayar is given from Mitzrayim to umbring in Zayin Midbar. Was the Tatnib Avais, as Damo Teshe Geven, Nach Degzeri Ba Midbar, as Ayitamo. Previous times they said we're going to die in the desert, but it wasn't sincere because nobody was going to die. But this time, they're actually going to die in the desert. Moshe told them nobody's going to live. Anybody that was older than 20 is going to die over the next 40 years. So they said, you, del- you made a promise, delivered you did not. You took us out from one country to kill us in the desert. When did that happen? Only after the Miraglam. 
Before the miracle, Moshe said, well, we're going, we're going. <laughs> but now they're talking not going. They're talking not going. This is the raya of Toysvist Rajbam, say the oilam that the mice of Kodach happens after the miracle. So that's the, that, that's, that's the raya. Pushed in time when it happened. Because Dasan and Avinim could say this. This is what Dawson and Avidim said. Kairach's perspective, if it happened after the Meraglim, why did he wait till then? What happened now? In other words, if Kairach is, is having a real taina, his taina, Maduat is nasu. So why did he wait till after the Maya Samarag? Let's think about this. When did Hashem say to take away the Avaida from the first male borns? They were the ones who did the Avaida. And give it to Aaron and his children that they should represent Hashem in the Mishkan. This happened either by Matan Taira or once the Mishkan was established. That's a discussion he says in footnote 3, the Gemara in Zvachim, in Rabbein Abachaya. But according to all opinions, the Kohun Agdoyla of Aaron and his children, which Kairach was complaining about, certainly happened when the Mishkan was put up. By Yoy Mashmini, the eighth day of which was when? When was the Mishkan put up? So let's remember the history. The Jewish people came out of Egypt, Tesvav Nisan, Pesach. Matan Torah was seven weeks later, right? The sixth day of Sivan, or the seventh day of Sivan. Huh? Right. The Chet Egel was Shiva Sabatamos. A year later, Rishchidosh Nisan, they put up the Mishkan, right? The first anniversary of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And Chavtes Sivan, a few months later, the Miraglam was sent, and they came back to Shabbat. So if Aaron was chosen already by Matan Teda to be a Kayan, that's already a year and a few months, that's a year, more than a year before the Miraglam was sent, a year and a few months before the Miraglam came in. Even if Aaron was chosen to be the Kayan when the Mishkan was put up, Chav Gimel Adar, they started to put up the Mishkan, it was eight, seven days on and off, and Nisan, it was established. So that's, that's, that's almost a half a year before the Miraglam came back. The Miraglam again came back only Tishabov. It says that's the night that they were weeping. So why did Kairach wait a year and a few months to complain? Or almost a half a year to complain? Again, again, it depends if Adam was chosen by Matan Torah or Adam was chosen the next year when the Mishkan was put up. But certainly Kairach waited a while. Even if you want to say Rashi brings from the Medrash that the main complaint of Kairach was that Moshe appointed Elit Safan, the son of Uziel, as a Nasi, as a leader for the Bnei Kahas. And Kairach felt, basically Kahas was Levi's son. Yaakov had a son, Levi, Levi had a son, Kahas. Kahas had four children. Amram, Yitzar, Hevron, and Uziel. Amram's children were Moshe, Aaron, and Miriam. Okay. Kairach was a son of Yitzar. Moshe appointed the youngest, a younger cousin, a Litzafan, the son of Uziel, to run the matzah of Bnei Kahas. He says, if yeah... You took already the main powers, yeah? So the next one in line is Kairach. You have Amram Yitzar. You go to the next brother, and I'm the son of the next brother. He gave it to Uziel. El Yitzafim ben Uziel. Kairach was very upset. When did this happen? This is when they counted the Levium, which was the beginning of Iyer, but much before the Miraglim was sent and before the Miraglim came back. So any way you spin it, he's upset that Aaron is the kind godly. He's upset that Aaron's children are kind him. He's upset that Moshe is a leader. Moshe didn't become a leader after the Miraglim. Moshe became a leader already before he sees Mitzrayim. And certainly by Matan Torah. Any way you spin it, he's upset that this Nekud or that Nekud or whatever it is, it happens much before Kairach's, Kairach's mutiny. So if you believe this is unjust, why were you sleeping till now? So if you want to be cynical, you could say he was just waiting for an opportunity to give a punch. 
after the Meraglim, and this is what some people say, after the Meraglim, the people were down. When people are down and depressed, you can get them to make revolutions, right? I don't want to compare, but... Huh? It's much easier to control the people. You, 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 there's panic, there's hysteria, there's fear. Everybody's afraid they're going to die. You know, the people are down and they're upset at Moshe, even though it's not Moshe's fault. Moshe is not the one... <laughs> who convinced them not to go to Eretz Yisrael? So what's Vilstuf for Moshe? It's not Aaron's fault. <laughs> go to the Miraglim. What's Vilstuf for Zay? But that's how it is. Moshe is the leader. You know, you go to Mami, you go to Tati. So in other words, it's just, it was just a cynical ploy when people were upset because they're not going to Eretz Yisrael. But the truth is, because Kairach got so many leaders and successful people, and Kairach himself was considered a Manda Omar. So the Rebbe Tainas that it has to be that Kairach couldn't just come across as literally, I just woke up now for no reason, just because I can get the oilam. But there has to be a theme that there was something about the Miraglim that shifted the consciousness of the Jewish people that allowed the revolt of Kairach. So it's not just a technical thing. Now, you know, the oilam is exhausted. Why not? We'll make some trouble. Anybody say, they have 40 years, what are they going to do for 40 years? So I'll make some chop. But rather, there's a thematic connection between the story of the spies and the story of Kerch. Huh? Well, it depends how you define doomed. Listen, it was 40 years that they ate every day from the man. They had Moshe, they had iron. They, huh? <laughs> no expenses, no worries. They had the clouds of gold. Remember, the 40 years were literally paradise. It wasn't... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they didn't go into Eretz Yisrael. Huh? And that's what they asked for, yeah. And they had Moshe there. They had Moshe there. There's a word, a student of the Arizal was Reb Chaim Vital. He had a son, Reb Shmuel Vital. He's the one who edited his father's writings. His father wrote down the teachings of the Arizal, Reb Chaim Vital. And Reb Shmuel edited them. So in one of the writings of the Arizal, in Parsha Shlach, that Israel has a whole toy about Moshe not going to Eretz Yisrael. Shmuel Vital says, I want to add the Psavart. He says, Omar Shmuel. That uh, in Parshas Baloischa, Elder and Medad started to prophesy. What did they say? That Moshe is going to die and Yeshua is going to take the Jews into Eretz Yisrael. Moshe Meis, Yeshua Machnas. So he says, the story of the Bragam happened right after that. They knew the moment we go into Eretz Yisrael, Moshe is going to pass away. So they had Messiris Nefesh to rebel against Hashem and Moshe, so that Moshe should stay alive. And they got him for 40 years. Father Yisrael had Moshe Rabbeinu because of the Meraglim. That's what he says. He says, they knew they're doing the wrong thing. They're destroying the whole plan. But they had Moshe Rabbeinu for another 40 years. He says, you know what that gave the Jewish people? That's what the Pshuvah Vital writes. It's a spin on the story. So to understand the Shaykhs of Kairach to the Meraglim, the Lubavitcher Rebbe says, let's understand deeper what happened with the spies. The time from the Meraglim Vishen Giret, the previous Shabbos, Shabbos Shlach, Tavshin Chav Beis, the, previous, the whole Sikh was about explaining the story of the Meraglim and to print it, Lakut HaSikh HaSchelech Dalat Shlach, and this is a continuation, the next Shabbos. What's the summation? What happened with the Meraglim? Here again, when you read the story, it seems like Kairach was a troublemaker and the Meraglim were even bigger troublemakers. Kairach at least said that Moshe Rabbeinu was the one who invented everything. The Miraglim said that the whole plan of Hashem was one big colossal mistake. Everybody's going to die, and there's no way we're going into Eretz Yisrael, and we have to stay in the Midbar. But Pashtus, you look at it, that there was simply a rebellion that maybe came out of fear or hysteria or panic, etc. Here again is the question. If the Miraglim were a bunch of lowly individuals, I understand. But Rashi himself, the Pusik says, Kulam Anashim Rashi Bnei Yisrael Hema. They were all prominent individuals, leaders. Rashi Bnei Yisrael, Moshe hand picked them one by one. Everyone was a leader of his Shevet. You had Yeshua Ben you had Kalev, you had the Krem de la Krem, as we say. And from such a group of people, such a disaster should come out. The greatest colossal disaster of leadership that we know of in Jewish history, certainly in early Jewish history. So the Shaila is, what happened? So he says the Taina was is given as Mandav sein abgesundet vom Welt. The Meraglim, it wasn't just a regular sin. Of course it was a sin, but there was something very noble about the sin. What was noble about it? As I said, what, what was the situation of the Jewish people in the Midbar? 
They were literally living in the clouds, pun intended. They were living in paradise. The Miraglim were afraid. This the Alter Rebbe says in Lekut HaTorah and Parsha Shlach. It's a, it's a moide de kavod from the Alter Rebbe. I never saw it before. The Sfasemis quotes it a few times. Chidush Shaharim, even before the Sfasemis. But the Lekut HaTorah Shlach, the Alter Rebbe says that the Miraglim were not afraid of failure. They were afraid of success. Which is a moide de kichidish. Usually we say most people are afraid of failure. But sometimes we're afraid of success more than failure. What would success look like? They would go into Eretz Yisrael. They would be successful. They would conquer the land. They would settle it. The Miraglim says, oh, this is the problem. We're going to lose our entire spiritual touch. From a nation that is divine, we're going to become a nation that is political. <laughs> not a bad, not a bad point. <laughs> from a nation that is completely focused on, on ideas. Completely focused on ideas. What do you do in a desert? <laughs> They're completely focused on ideas. It's, it's a nation, the only nation that was built not on a country, based on territory. It was built on an idea. Think about history. Every nation, what makes America, how did Americans become Americans? How did the English become English? How did the French become French? The answer is, we live in a territory together, Right? We need to protect ourselves. We need to create some cohesive political entity in order to be able to live together and protect ourselves from our enemies. So it's the land, it's the earth that creates the identity of the nation. MS, no a nation was conceived in any other way. So what comes first? The earth, the territory makes us a people. How, what about the Jewish people? Where did we become a people? <laughs> We became a people, not in a country, not in a homeland, in a place that you actually can't live. So what made us a people? An idea. Matan Teira. Anoich Hashem Alekecha. That's what Rapsad Yagon writes in Hemunas Videis. Rapsad Yagon writes. 900. Umaseinu einenu uma kiim b'teira iseha. The only definition of our nation is Teira Mitzvahs. Which explains why a Jew in Australia and a Jew in Russia and a Jew in America and a Jew in Brazil a Jew in London and Paris and Morocco, huh? and of course Eretz Yisrael too, but that's not the Chiddush. Of course. Huh? <laughs> An American is living in Australia for, for 1,500 years, must be still an American. The Elta, Elta, the, but by Jews it's not that way, right? The Jew in Australia, the Jew in Moscow, the Jew in London, the, was his El Bayid. Why? Not because Eretz Yisrael is not important, Chas Shalom. Not because it's not our land. But because Uma Seinu Eineno Uma Kiyim Yisrael. So in history, it's a completely different reality. That's why exile didn't destroy the Jewish people. Not that it was, not that it was easy. But it didn't destroy them. Because, because the definition of Kalal Yisrael, we didn't begin in Eretz Yisrael, we began in the desert. It's an idea. That made the Jew the Jew. So the Jew in Moscow put on tefillin, and the Jew in Morocco put on tefillin, the Jew in Los Angeles put on tefillin. It was this, this, this Zelb and the Kudah. You just said now, was the take of Rabbi Yaakov Mazah from Moscow, that he came to Mendel, Mendel Bayless. 1911. 1911. Atem kriyim adam ve'enom esoylem kriyim adam. This is one of the big arguments between the secular Zionists before the creation of the state of Israel, right? That the Jew in Chutzlar, it's this is one of the big debates. But this was Absadia's gone argument. This was Absadia Gon's argument. The Miraglam understood this very well. They said, What happens now? <laughs> we go to Eretz Yisrael, yeah, right away. You need an army, you need a government, you need a Knesset. You know what the Knesset looks like in Israel? <laughs> huh? not such a nice joke, but they say that Sharansky once said, <laughs> Sharansky was in the Knesset for many years, he once said, what's the difference between me and the other Knesset members? I was in prison before I came into the Knesset. <laughs> he was in prison in, in the Soviet Union. The point of the Miraglam was, you got to be crazy. And that's what the Rebbe teaches, Eretz Eichelis Yeshvah. What's about Eretz Eichelis Yeshvah? It's a land that eats up its inhabitants. So physically it means that it's going to kill us. 
They meant something much deeper. The, the country is going to eat us up. There won't be Jews left. We're going to be eaten up. We're going to be consumed by materialism, by politics, by divisiveness, by, by pressure. The ecstasy of life, the dveikus with Hashem, that you're living in the midbar with Moshe and Aaron and the clouds and the man, and, and you don't have to deal with clothes and tuition and, and mortgages and, and, sh- and all crises that people have because of the pressures of life, we're all gone. What did they do all day? And the answer is, they were in oneness, literal oneness with Hashem, living in paradise like in Gan Eden. And they knew it's going to change. Hashem said it's going to change. There's no man in Eretz Yisrael. Sheishonim tizra sadecha. You're going to have to plow and plant. In other words, you're, it's transforming the fabric of the people. The land is going to eat us up. Eretz Yisrael. That's, uh, that's not something. <laughs> They're saying something. You know, when you get eaten up by something, when you eat food, the food becomes part of you. There's nothing left of the food. You don't have a banana that sits in your stomach. It becomes part of the bloodstream. So if the land is going to eat us up, what does it mean? It means we're going to become earth. There's not going to be nothing left to us. This is our place. This is our destiny. So the Miraglim were not afraid of failure. They were afraid of success. They were afraid of losing everything that Yiddishkeit is. Now we have to relate to what they're saying because there's a very powerful, powerful idea there. The powerful idea is that there's... there's it's hard for us to understand because, you know, we live in a material world and we have to pay our bills. But understand the life in the Midbar, right? There was Gilead Lekus Mamash. This, and this was a generation that left Egypt. That's, they were at Matan Torah. The only generation that saw Hashem face to face was them. So reality was different reality. By us, it's, you know, philosophy, theology, proofs. By them, it wasn't philosophy, it wasn't theology. It wasn't all proof to you from a cell that God exists. They didn't have that. They, they, it was, they were living in a higher reality. And it continued, and it continued every day. And now we have to lose it all. This was, this was the time of the miracle. Yeah. From heaven, you got to go into the abyss. <laughs> From Ganeden, the Gehenna, knew it's not a time. The, the nation heard this. This is a psavar there. Why is it a sin? You have to understand why it's a sin. A sin it is, but it's not an ugly sin. It's a profound, it's a spiritual sin. The reason it's a sin is because the tachlis of the whole Bria Sa'olimus was to transform the physical world. That's why it was a sin. A taina they had. Fear there is. Eretz Echelis Yeshva Emes. But for this purpose, the Neshama never had to come down. The whole Yisoy, the whole purpose of creation was Nisava Kadush Baruch Uliyas Le Dira Betachtoinim. The Medrash says Hashem wanted we to create a Dira Betachtoinim. Let's try to Dira Betachtoinim to take to take the lowest element of reality and transform it into a divine abode. Yes, to go into Yisrael <laughs> and to build an infrastructure and to build your tent and. And, and develop, cultivate your field and plow and plant and milk your cows and harvest your grain and suddenly you're giving percentage challah to the kayin and truma to the kayin and maisa to the levi and maisa sheni to your shalayim and maisa oni to the poor people. Right after the story of the miraglim, you have the mitzvah of challah, you have the mitzvah of nesachim, you have the mitzvah of tzitzis, you take the wool of your, of your, of your sheep and, you give a little, and, 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 and part of the wool becomes tzitzis. What's that idea? You're transforming the earth into divine. You're not going to heaven. You're bringing heaven, a fragment of heaven down to earth. Is it challenging? Of course it's challenging. But this challenge is the core and the mission. That's why, that's why you sent down a soul, not a malach. It starts with the person who knows. Do I have a body? Yeah. Can I neglect my body? No. Do I have an animal consciousness? Yeah. Can I neglect it? No. I need to work with it, transform it. That's the whole Kiddush of Torah. That was the argument of Moshe and the angels. The angels said, leave Torah here. And Moshe said, you have a Yetzirah? You guys want to murder? You have an issue with Leisachmoid, Leisinov, Leisignov? What does Torah have to do with you? That's how he won the Malachim. So the Maraglim said, we're Malachim. Why should we leave that? Gewaldic. But they didn't realize the whole year, the time of the death was a preparation to be able to go into Eretz Yisrael. So we have to understand here that there's a fundamental debate going on. It's not Stam, a bunch of Rishoyim who don't believe in anything. 
Faket. Dal Terebbe says if they wouldn't have been leaders, if they wouldn't have been sensitive, if they wouldn't have been spiritual, they wouldn't have a problem. Yeah, let's go fight. <laughs> they were afraid we're going to become bullies. We're going to become bullies. Feel to some extent. People today feel the same way. Yeah. How many people really want Mashiach? Really want to go to Israel? Really want to go to <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> They were comfortable. They were very comfortable. This was the ultimate comfort zone. Not because of narcissism and materialism, because they were spiritual people. When you're a spiritual human being and you get it, why would I go into a Gehenna where I have to start fighting with everybody? I don't understand. Never mind if you're not going to have Moshe Rabbeinu as a teacher anymore. Think about that. Back to what Shmuel Vital said. If they knew in Eretz Yisrael, Moshe is not coming in, it's going to be a replacement. Nice replacements. Yeshua ben Nun was no, uh, <laughs> no small person, but the Gemara says of Abbasra that when uh, the Skenim, the older, the elder, the elders, they said, Pnei Yeshua, Eloi Sabusha, Eloi Sechlima, Pnei Moshe, Pnei Chama, Pnei Yeshua, Pnei Levana. Moshe was like the sun and, and Yeshua was like the moon. Darizal even writes. <laughs> This is where Shmuel Vital says it. Arizal says the reason Moshe didn't go into Eretz Yisrael is because Moshe is the face of the sun. Eretz Yisrael is the face of the moon. Eretz Yisrael is known as Malchus, Pnei Levon. What, hap- what would happen in the middle of the night when the moon is shining if the sun came out? What would happen to the moon? <laughs> you wouldn't see it, it would be eclipsed. So Moshe couldn't go into Eretz Yisrael because he would embarrass the Kedush of Eretz Yisrael. That's the result's take on it. B'Shas, Mashiach is going to come. It says, V'hoya o'er ha'levona ka'or ha'chama. Like we say in Kiddush Levona, there's going to be the Tikkun HaGomor. Now Moshe can go into Eretz Yisrael. <laughs> Yehoshua was Pnei Levona, so he can go into Eretz Yisrael. Yehoshua in Eretz Yisrael could work. Moshe going into Eretz Yisrael is a different level. That's what the result explains. On this piece in the Arizal, Rabbi Shmuel Vital says what I told you before, why the spies didn't, didn't want to go in, because they wanted to keep Moshe. Okay, so now let's go back to our discussion. Okay, that's a whole... Uh, yeah, obviously it represents something, the sun, the moon. No, we're not only talking about... The physical is a mirror of the spiritual, like always, everything. So you said that you, you take away the moon and uh, the whole life of the planet Earth is gone. <laughs> Yeah, we like the moon, yeah? No, v'shechanti b'seichem the head of the Midbar. <laughs> they did. Not permanent, but they had a B'kadosh HaKadosh HaMavada they had. They had. Yeah. The Kadosh HaKadosh had the Mambali, yeah? Okay, it, it, was, it was a temporary structure. It wasn't the base of Mikdash, but they had Kadosh HaKadosh In Mitzrayim, but in the mid, but everybody was sitting and learning. There was nothing else to do. The Miraglim said, "Let we have God here. The intimacy with the Rebbeinu Nishalayim you're never going to have again in history. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Don't leave. Don't leave." Eretz <laughs> Yisrael. Well, that's the language, dvekas. I mean, the Alter Rebbe uses the word dvekas. Leiratzu leiret. He says they didn't want to go down. They didn't want to have a yidde from oilam machshava to oilam amaisa, from the world of machshava, the world of meditation, of ecstasy, of oneness, of transcendence. They did mitzvahs in the midbar, but you can't compare the mitzvahs in the midbar to the mitzvahs uh, in Eretz Yisrael. The mitzvahs in the midbar are mostly mitzvahs of machshava and dibur. The mitzvahs in Eretz Yisrael is mostly mitzvahs maisius. There's a question if they put on tefillin in the midbar. It's a machlekes in Rishonim. There's a rashba about it. The carbon pesach they did only once. There were mitzvahs in the midbar. Of course, there were mitzvahs. Uh, once, the second year. But most mitzvahs maisius, right? Especially mitzvahs connected to the earth, and mitzvahs connected to a house, and mitzvahs connected to a field and a farm, and all these things. And most of them were done only in Eretz Yisrael. In the midbar, we didn't have it. Even their food, there was man. There are memi fanu. One of the great Macbom says that when they ate the man, they made a bracha before. Baruch atah Hashem alekeinu melechoylem amoytzi lechem min hashamayim. Knew they said that we're going to replace this with 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 the sourdough bread here in the bakery. Mele sourdough bread with ragalach. We're going to replace this. 
You have to spend hours in the bathroom. The Gemara says in Yuma that the man, all parts of the man were nutritious. He didn't have to go to the bathroom after because the body didn't have to reject. Why do we have to go? The body rejects 50% of the food, sometimes 99% of the food if it's potato chips. Right? But the man, it was so, it was so healthy, it was integrated in the body. Why should I reject it? It's the best thing. <laughs> so they didn't have to go to the bathroom for 40 years. Interesting, no? 40 years, the Jews didn't have to go to the bathroom unless, when they, unless they ate. The Chidah writes, it says at the end of Bullock that the Jews uh, met the Bnei Smoyov and they gave them to eat from their Avoid Zoda offerings. And then they made them worship the Baal Pa'ar. So the Chidah says an interesting thing. What was the Baal Pa'ar? You would defecate to your deity. But as long as they were eating the man, they didn't have to go to the bathroom, so they couldn't do the bal pa'or. But vayoychlu mezivche alekeyen. Once they ate from their foods, oh, now they had to go to the bathroom. I got in tug. So they did the bal pa'or. So the chidorats. So the point is, even the physicality that they had was different. Now we know that, that, that the moods of people is created, is connected to food you eat. So imagine if you're eating for 40 years the purest of foods, right? Heavenly, heavenly, heavenly food. There's not a drop of poison, toxicity. It's a different, it's a different guf. It's a different type of guf. It's an ois geidel to guf. It says in Mechil, Torah could only be learned and given for the people who ate the man. It's interesting. To be toifus Torah, the mind has to be real, real Torah. It has to be clear, translucent, transparent. The mind, when it's filled with, with, with static and stress and anxiety and garbage, you, 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 you could think, but you can't think straight. You could barely figure out how to pay your bills. Never mind, think about, you know, ultimate truth. So this was the time of the Menagam, yeah. It would be a whole different avoid. So the Rebbe is saying here... He's, He's not saying that the Miraglim, what they did was right. But he's saying you have to understand their perspective. They made a mistake. And they did an Aveira. And it was a Merida in Malchus Shemayim. But why? Not because they, didn't have, they weren't saying anything. But because the whole Kavana is to take on the world. Not to escape it. I'll tell you a Gishmaka Vart. Sometimes an Apikaita says a good Vart. In, in, in Russia, there was a Yid, he was known as Echad Ha'am. His name was Asher Ginsberg. He was a very, very secular Jew and very brilliant. And he was one of the big, big spiritual Zionists, but very, had a lot of issues with Torah and Mitzvahs. Let's put it that way. His literary name was Echad Ha'am, which itself is a Litzanus, because it comes from Parshish Toldos, Avimelech, Echad Ha'am. Uh, he died in 1927. Through his wife, through his wife, he was a cousin with the Rebbe Rashab, with the fifth Lubavitcher Rebbe. She, was from the, she married somebody from the Tzamach Tzedek's family. Um, I think he lived in Odessa. So he once came to the city of Lubavitch to meet his cousin, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the Rebbe Rashab. Let's put it this way. They did not see eye to eye on many issues. <laughs> he was a very smart man, but he was uh, a fine apicatus. So, uh, the Mendel Futifah said this story. When he went out, he spent a lot of time with the Rebbe Rashab, with the Rebbe Shalom Ber, the, the fifth Lubavitch Rebbe, passed away in 1920. So they asked him what his, uh, what his opinion about his cousin is, Lubavitch Rebbe. <laughs> Listen to a guy. So he said six words. But to appreciate his words, I just have to tell you a Maimah Chazal. The Gemara says about certain individuals in history, Yoideyes Ribayno Yomachavan Limridboy. It says it about Nimrod, it says it about Amalek. They knew their masters and they rebelled intentionally. They weren't naive. They knew, they knew everything you have to know. It's like the highest level of, uh, of rebellion. It's not naivete, it's not trauma. It, it, I know exactly what That's the Lashon of Chazal. So Achad Am used that Lashon. They said, what's your opinion about the Lubavitch Rebbe? He said, Yoideya es ha'olam o mechaven limrod boy. He knows the world and he rebels against it intentionally. In other words, you have people, they're, 
you know, they're isolated. isolated. You don't know anything else. So you're in, you're in the system. You're <laughs> in the Meraglim were very afraid of that. Once you taste this reality, you're gonna be you're gonna be finished. You can have you understand. The reason it was a chet is because that's the whole tachlo sabriya to go down from the ananiya kavit into earth. Let's see weiter. So this is what he said. The tiny from the menagel was given as we meant to have sein abgesundet from welt. Und die Dibre haben sie gewollt eaten, so haben bleiben in Midbar. Bech dey as welt soll sein nicht sterren, so sei et weikes mit dem Meibersten durch Limit der Teure. There was no dveikes with Hashem through learning Teure like there was in the Midbar. Moshe himself was the teacher. <laughs> Where do you get better? You're hearing every day a shir from Moshe Rabbeinu for 40 years. Not a bad thing. And you don't have to go to work after. Huh? Life is so bad. Comes Moshe and says, what did Yeshua and Kolov say? Not Eretz Echelis Yeshua. That the Tachlis, the ultimate Eloi, the ultimate greatness, is not to remain in a spiritual cocoon learning, even though you need that, of course. But the Maisa Mitzvah Begashmi is the ability to be able to go into a physical world and bring in the ruts and the truth into that world. And that happens primarily through the actions of mitzvahs in a material, physical way. The Meraglim shunned that. They shunned that whole reality. The Chil, exhibition title of mitzvahs is... Now let's think about it. If the ultimate avoid in the Midbar was Torah, learning, and in the Eretz Yisrael, the main avoid would become mitzvahs, only a few people could sit all day and learn. Most Jews had to farm or whatever they did. Mitzvahs Maisim. And you had to kayan him in the Beis HaMikdash, in the Mishkan. But most Jews not. What's the difference in Torah and Mitzvahs? In Torah, what's the Indian is the Chavon of our Sagas and the Fram for Shid in the Madregas. Ain't not a Klaner our Saga and ain't not a Gresser our Saga. Mashenkin in Mitzvah and Mitzvahs and Alec like the Maisa Noch is filling with Moshe Rabbein. What Mekayim given is given the Zelbe Maisa versus Tutan Ishposhet. Torah is about comprehension. In that, there is diversity ad infinitum. One person has greater comprehension, smaller comprehension. One person is more expansive mind, less expansive mind. Everyone haps and internalizes in their own unique way based on your brain, based on your consciousness. That's when it comes to learning. No two people can learn the same. There's no such a thing. Not even two Tanoim or Amirayim. Everyone has their hasaga based on who they are. It's the Sherish and the the type of brain, etc. Mitzvahs. What's mitzvahs? Mitzvahs is the same. Moshe Rabbeinu putting on tefillin. And a simple Jew who's completely on Ajir, putting on tefillin. The kavan of tefillin, you can't compare to Moshe and him. But the mice of tefillin, you're eating matzah, I'm eating matzah, he's eating matzah, there's all the matzah. <laughs> you're taking the matzah, you make a book, you put it into your mouth, that's what it is. Why? Because it's about the action. It's not about comprehension, awareness, consciousness, meditative experience, ecstasy. In the internal, emotional, intellectual life, no two people are alike. But in the physical activity, right? <laughs> if you're farming, we're both putting in seeds into the ground. We're giving tzedakah. I'm giving a dollar, you're giving a dollar. Or you're giving more. But the mice is the same. Once again, because the kavan. Chilukim zayin in doin kavan asa mitzvahs. But in maisa mitzvahs, zayin in alaglach. Sometimes the kavan can affect the maisa. Of course sometimes the kavan can affect the maisa. But the actual action deed itself. Okay, so, so now let's understand. We're talking the mice, the mice again. It depends how you define Yiddishkeit. So this, he says, this, this is why Kairach happens after the story of the Meraglam. It's very, very, it's, it's, it's a big Kiddush. Kairach could not say what he said till after the story of the spies. Because the story of the Meraglam changed something very fundamental. What? And, and therefore Kairach seemed justified. Before the story of the Menagmi, you could say like this. The whole purpose of action is just to demonstrate emotion, intention. Take a marriage. What's the nukudah of a marriage? Marriage is dveikus, love, relationship, feeling. 
Obviously, if my wife asks me to go to the airport to pick up her sister, you got to get into the car and do it. Nish dos is the Indian. It's, a, it's, it's an Evan Abbeuchen, it's a litmus test. So what's Yiddishkeit? Yiddishkeit is Ruchnius. Elamai. Obviously, there's things you got to do. That notion was challenged with the story of the Menaglim. That notion, what Moshe Rabbeinu was teaching is that the Maisa itself, the physical itself, the body itself, that has in it a tachlis that's deeper than the internal experience. Oh, if that's the case, that's a moida de kechidish. So suddenly Kairach emerged and he went to the opposite extreme. The Ribbon is Machlaikus Kairach Kum and Ashnach the Minyan Amaraglam. Kairach had Kivust as in Limud Ataira Stein, Moshe Rabbeinu and Arna Kaina Sachach of Yandere Yid. Moshe Rabbeinu is the given the Makabarish of Nakadish Borahu, the Nakhat, the Tedigalari mit Anan, the Nakh with the Bnayan, the Anmid Skanem, or Nashpet mit Ali Yid. This says in seven, eight of Inundalit. Was thus meant to echa the limit of the time for Moshe Van is given Nidblaze Friar in this man, or Ech Hecher in Maila, but Erech the limit of the time for Nala and Reden. Kairach Stein, the Maduot is Nasus Gemen again, the Maisa Shua Iker for Mitzvah Smaisis, for Sendem San Aliyden Gleich. Und die Ribbe hat sich dann mal gleich gesungen, erst noch in den Ameraglum. Noch, damit die Ameraglum haben gewollt, abgeben sich neu mit Teile, weil wir die Rücken ist verbleiben im Mitbrunnen, sein abgeschlossen vom Welt. Und eben damit möchte ich, wenn ich geantwortet habe, dass ich noch von dem Eber stehe. Also man muss dafür gerade in der Zeit, dass man keinem sein Mitzvah begaschen ist. Und so liebt dem es gedeiht zu verlassen, der Mitbrunnen, die Abgeschlossenheit von den Jahren im Garten, wo man kann haben, größer hat, sagt es, weil am Mai so ekel. Dann ist keiner gerissen, kommt mit seinem Teil, mit dem Nassau. Was ist also die Größkeit von Moshe Wannensee? Meil, der gab bei allen anderen Reden, sagt, nur in Ruchen ist der Kenyan und in Limmer der Teure, aber in der Mitte der Meister, mit seinem Begast, wir sind doch alle gleich. You hear what he's saying? Keiner knew that in Teure und Ruchen ist Moshe und Aaron are completely in a different caliber. Everybody knew that. Who was the prophet? Moshe. Who was the one that Hashem taught the whole Teure to? Moshe Rabbeinu, it wasn't a mistake. <laughs> The Rambam writes about Moshe, Mifcher Min Hanusha, he was the perfection that a human being can be. Like, come Navi ke Moshe. And it says in Gemara, Tone Rabban and Ketzat say the Mishnah, Moshe heard the Torah, right? He, first he would teach it to Aaron. Then Aaron would bring in his children, he would teach it to his children. Then he would bring in the Skenim, he would teach it to the Skenim, and then he would bring in all the Jews, he would teach it to all the Jews. So Aaron heard it four times from Moshe, his children heard it three times, the Skenim heard it twice, and all the Jews heard it once. And then everybody could... And then Aaron could teach it over to everybody else, etc. So it's not just in time. It's also in Mila. There was levels of learning. Why did he first learn it with Aaron? Moshe first had to be Aaron's Chavrusa. So it was Moshe and then Aaron and then his children and then this Kainim. Kairach understood that. Kairach said, Madua Tisnasa, why are you exalted when it comes to mitzvahs Maisius? In the action, everybody is identical. So now, after the Miraglim, oh, Kairach has a big taina. The Miraglim said, what's the whole tachlis of Yiddishkeit? Taina, avoid the spirituality. Stay in the Midbar and remain excluded from the world. Moshe Rabbeinu says in the name of Hashem, Toiva or it's Ma'id Ma'id. Olay na'i levir So the tachlis is to step out of the spiritual cocoon. And bring godliness into the Maisa Mitzvahs, into the physical world, through the Maisa Mitzvahs. And for this, it's Kedai, to leave the desert and abandon the nest of holiness. Why? Even though there you're going to have much more Hasaga, you're going to be on a much more spiritual level. But Hamaisa Huikir, oh, if this is the Tachlis, Lamatis Nasu. Why are you any different than anybody else? I understand in Ruchnis, I understand in learning, but on Maisa. And as he says in 8, take a look. V'zeo sh'amru u'besoicha ma'ashem u'madu'a t'snasu al-kahal ha'ashem ki avayu sh'em ha'etzim sh'nim sh'chad e'ma yisam mitzvahs. When Kairach stages his revolt, he says, kol ha'eidah kulam g'doishim u'betoicham yudkei vofkei betoicham ha'ashem madu'a t'snasu al-kahal ha'ashem. Ha'ashem has many names. Yudkei vofkei is the sh'em ha'etzim. It's the name of the essence. What Kairach was saying, betoicham ha'ashem. The etzim of ha'ashem is betoicham in ma'isa. The dinner that you make is betachtoinim. That's where his purpose is. That's where his essence is. I know the revelations are more in spirituality. But the atzmi is the core. The core is in the guf, is in mitzvah smaisiyas. Madua tisnasu al kal Hashem. Aibazayid is real equality. He'll explain more. Let, let, let's just, it'll be, it'll be clear. 
der mit Gimmel, der mit wird verändert nach Akash. Wie er so im König mit dem Hamaschen und Massaim, das sie jeder gekannt, man bei Mölsche waren, man tut es nass, so wie bald als Kolle, der Kolum, der Schmuck, der Hamaschen, sehr allein sein, doch gewinnen, das sie jeder. Und als er ist der ganze Schäfer, der gewinnt, Hecher von allen Schwatten. Und mit seiner Teile haben sie doch nicht gemeint, zu aufgeben, seine eigene Hechigkeit. Aber sie haben was ich gewollt, euch gehören. Wie sie es mögen von den Menschen von mir, Schäfer, wenn ihr bekascht habt, ihr gehören. Ist wie als er sind sie gekommen mit der Saat, Teile, was ich schäle, seine eigene Meile. There's something in the story that's strange. There were 215 CIA leaders who all came to revolt. And they said, Madhu, it is not so. I don't understand. You yourself. <laughs> I'm like, a, I'm, a, I'm a leader in a huge, in a huge, uh, a huge corporate. Then I come to you and say, why are you a leader? Why are you like everybody? I'm also a leader. <laughs> so you would say they were ready to tell much. Oh, we're all, let's all quit. Let's all quit. There's no leadership. Everybody is equal. But they weren't saying that. <laughs> The Levium themselves, who came with Kaira, they themselves were in a position of leadership. They were unique. They had a unique status and unique place where they lived and unique privileges and they could go into places other people didn't go. They had a whole, there was a unique element there. They had to protect the Mishka. And it's not like they were telling Moshe Rabbeinu, we're ready to give it all up. Let's just all be equal. Let's all become like everybody else. Because Moshe said, Ubi kam kuhuni. you guys actually want more leadership. Sir. So you're pulling out the rug from your time. It's like, right, right, everybody is equal. But we're going to be more equal than everybody else. Kairach is everybody is equal, but I want to be the kind God. I mean, it's like a joke. So this happened in the Soviet Union. The whole story of the Soviet Union is this. Everybody is equal. Besides the few people who get the power, and suddenly they have all the power, but everybody is equal. And they represent your equality. But uh, obviously, right, in a nation that's called Am Chachem Venoven, how does such a time take root? Muzmen zagen as mit maduat es nasu am zeh nit gemein zum evatel sein es nasus bechlal zeh benar gewalt shoylo sein des sort es nasus von Moshe Rabbeinu das was er es gwen be es nasus von Amelach zeh am geteinet emes takas am tan chiluk madrege zivishin yidin und as de gresta bale madrege kennen und darfen zu lib zeh hechikait sein es siem ev de klener de bale madrege we bald aber as kalle de kolom gedeus mom de alle madreges von jeden an erich eine zu der andere weil de hechigkeit von einem ev a zweiten besteht doch nur in as sages ruchnis was es a toffel le gabe a meis so eken und in dem eken sind alle gleich kines kelel be meil hat kein ort nit as meister bei uns aus einer melch wo das es a der heubenkeit schebe einer reich we bald as in dem eken sind alle jeden gleich kennen doch zwischen sein nit sein as solche gelukem as einer so sein be einer reich hechig von andere they weren't complaining, according to this we can understand, they weren't saying there shouldn't, that Moshe Rabbeinu shouldn't teach and Anand shouldn't, uh, shouldn't give what he has to give. They themselves were leaders. They weren't, they weren't demonstrating hypocrisy. They were saying there's a type of isnasos that they disagree with. True, there's different madregas. No, no two people are equal. Everybody understands that. We might do it isnaso. You have one person who's good with his hands. You have one person who's good with his mouth. You have one person who's good with, with the brain. You have a person who's good with the feet. To say that every person should be doing exactly the same thing like everybody else is a shtus, right? <laughs> you have different forms of genius, different short forms of talent, different forms of skills. The whole society is built on that. Even ants understand that. If you take a colony of ants, a superorganism of ants, right, you have millions, and everybody does what they have to do to build a colony. You can't have everybody doing the same thing. It's budget. And different people have different mindless, different have different levels of IQ and different levels of EQ. It's, it's a different poshut. He wasn't undermining that, but that's not tisnasu. That's pshat. Yeah, Moshe is good with learning, and Aaron is good with kohuna, and they're good as Leviim, and they're good as Nesiyayed, and so forth. And if somebody has an advantage, a certain skill for something, obviously he could be a Nasi and, and teach it to other people. But this is not a fundamental issue. Because this is all in spirituality. But ultimately it's a tofel. And in that, everybody is identical. So the tisnasu is a technical thing. You're here, I'm here. But Maduat is Nasu al Kahal Hashem. To say that you're exalted al Kahal Hashem, what's the exaltedness of Moshe and Adam? They have Mailas and Nuchnis. Again, if the Taklas is Maisev, the Taklas is Gashmis, maybe it's Fakert. <laughs> maybe Moshe and Adam have to receive from others. 
He believed that in the ultimate calling of Judaism, after you learn from the spies, there's no room for Moshe and Aaron's position. The Miragun themselves were killed. Exactly. Why were they full of it? Because the Tachlis is Maisa. So Kairach said, oh, the Tachlis is Maisa. Kashmir Then everybody is the same. Exactly the point. No, the Miraglim tainet that the Iker of Yiddishkeit is Ruchnis. That's the Iker. The Iker of Ruchnis is Gan Eden. No, no, no. That's a, no. That's what they said. Maisa mitzvahs? Yeah, it's a technical thing. But how do you touch Maisa? Do you touch Maisa? It's a litmus test. The main thing is Ruchnis. In Olam Hazel, you have a few things you do Maisa, but that's not the Vart. The Vart is not Maisa. For Kert. Even later in life, right, as Judaism de- evolves throughout the generations, there's different approaches. There's an approach that the whole Olam has is one big clipper, one big mess. You have to go through it in order to get to Olam Haba. But what's the Ikka? The Ikka is Olam Haba. Yeah. The whole Gashmi is, it's a nuisance at best. Yeah, if you really have Dvekas, so yeah, you give Tzedakah, you put on Tefillin. But, but let's get to the point. <laughs> Ne'ila, that's a good place to be in. And it's a Gedal de Kavart. It's a Moida de Kavart. And they're right. That's what the Neshama had for eternity. The whole Chiddush of the Bria is not that they're wrong. You're right. It's a dangerous world. That's what you were sent into. You were sent into the Gulf and the Nefesh of Bahamas to transform, to bring light into darkness, not to get more light. Yeah, this is a word from Chassidus, Avada. <laughs> this is one of the Yisaitis of Chassidus. A lot of people explain the Meraglim, but this is how Chassidus explains the Meraglim. This is one of the Yisaitis of Chassidus, that the Yiddish guy is Dirip Takhtoinen. Fakert, in the physical world, that's where you have Atzmos. There's something in Elam Hazard that's deeper anywhere else. The people that learn all day, the souls, the souls that are, that are, uh, that are fit for it, and it inspires other people. You have to know what your avoid is. You have to know what your avoid is. Isn't everyone needs kviya sitim latayda. Everyone needs to have ganeden before you go into Gehenim. <laughs> you can't take a, a child needs to be in the womb before it can be born. You don't get married when you're two years old. You have to first be protected. You have to be in ananiya covered. You have to be in a place of kedusha. Then you can go out. But the tachlis is not to stay in the ananiya covered. To go out. To go into my gulf, whatever that means in every person's life, there's different madregas. It's not an inya to go into nisyoyin, it's not that. But it, the whole world is a nisyoyin, any way you spin it. So now Kairach gets this. Kairach says, oh, if that's really Yiddish guide, let's change the whole paradigm here. This whole thing of Moshe and Aaron being essentially in a different plane, Madua Tisnas al It's a whole different inya. There's real equality. There's real fundamental equality. Not only that, as we will see, the Taina of Kairach remains, just like the Meraglim, there's a truth that remains. They're right. You have to know, why does the Taina teach you about the Meraglim? Why, why is it a lesson? Because you have to know what they're saying. <laughs> when you go into Eretz Yisrael, you have to know, there's a, it could be Eretz Yisrael, there's a truth that you have to learn from. As we will see, Kairach, again, sinned. But there's a truth there. There's a truth there. Sometimes, this was something that the Baal Shem Tev taught, that there's a hierarchy in Judaism that takes over. You understand? You're the peasant, you're the leader, and we can't even look at each other. Right? You understand what I'm saying? And Kairach said, that's disgusting. You're not thinking about, you're not thinking about God, you're thinking about yourself. <laughs> huh? I'm enlightened, you're a peasant, don't, don't go... The, they say that the whole Musa movement, the Bissau Salanta, was created. Have you ever heard the story? Huh? In the literature world, they tell a story that the Bissau Salanta created the Musa movement because he was at a wedding. And uh, there was a, a shoemaker, but he did very well. And he got himself a good chosen, a great And uh, it's going to be hard for Chassidim to understand the story. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be hard. But they say, and he was dancing as a, in the middle of the circle with uh, 
very chash of a yidin. And somebody turned to him and said, Vi comes to Dada, Mr. Chashuster. How do you come to dance here? You're a shoemaker. So Mr. Salanta says, we have to learn Musa. <laughs> we have to learn Musa. <clears throat> So they said that created the Muslim. In the, the literature world, they tell a story. Again, it's hard for Chassidim to understand this. But they tell a story. It's, it shocked, when, I read this, when I heard the story first, it shocked me. Mendel Zaks, I think, told the story. The Chofetz Chaim had a daughter. And she married. Uh, she got married. The father didn't show up to the Chassan. <laughs> I have to say, the story shocked me, but I'm telling you the Maisa that they say. Father didn't show up to the chasen. Why not? His son's wedding, with the, he was a mechutna of the chafetz chayim. The mechutna didn't show up to the wedding. They said, why? He said, because I'm a simple Jew, I'm a Baal Malacha, and it would be embarrassing. No, it's, gonna be, it's not going to be covered at Torah for the chafetz chayim. <laughs> that this is who his daughter married. So he's not coming to the wedding. It's going to be embarrassing for the chafetz chayim. He said, Chavetz Chaim heard about it, and he was obviously upset. Chavetz Chaim was an Eid Liyid. He was upset. <laughs> now, when you learn Chassidus, such a Hava, I mean, uh, it's very strange. You know, first of all, why aren't you thinking about your son having his father at his wedding? I mean, <laughs> that's number one. Something is a little off. I'm not judging. I'm just saying it's a little... But number two, the whole Yisoyed, yeah, Sapasnesh, like, the Tekava Datayda means, <laughs> I'm garbage... And you're holy, and we can barely look at each other. That's a very, it's a very, dis, very distasteful because it's the Torah becomes ego, a lot of ego, 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 ego. And that's not what Torah is. The holy union of Torah is bittel, not ego. Musr is ethics. The Bissol Salanta said. So the Bissol Salanta said you have to work on your middas. You have to work on your, you have to be a mensch. You have to be nice. Al Pichsidis, the very ha- that fact that people could stand at a wedding with a with a shoemaker and say it's a past me to, me to dance with you, that's already more corrupt than everything else. <laughs> the thought is already you're you're completely off. You're you're missing the point. I'm just trying to explain to you that this Kirch is saying something very authentic. Because Madua Tisnasa could be a very dangerous thing. If I come into a crowd and I look, ah. Oh, a bunch of behemoths, a bunch of behemoths, a bunch of shkots, a bunch of idiots, and I will enlighten them, you know, who's enlightening whom? <laughs> who's enlightening whom? You understand? If God is infinite, so where does infinity get expressed? Let's put it this way. I want to ask you, Hashem. For Hashem, what's more important? What's more important, yeah? A nickel that I maybe give for stucker, one nickel, or a quarter, 25 cents. Okay. <clears throat> or... A black hole that's 25 billion miles in radius. <laughs> what's, what's more important? <clears throat> so you'll say, well, one, one is, one, one is was as big, and one is 25 billion miles. But the truth is something infinity. Hashava mash v'katan v'gadl. What's big, what's small? So in the presence of Ein Saif, right, if you're really enlightened, it's a whole different approach. So Kairach now takes it a step deeper. He says, when you understand what the Tachla Sabri is, what's this Maduat Nasu? What's this re- absolute exaltedness? So there's a very deep emes that he's saying over there. Because exaltedness could sometimes be corrupt. It's like, you're meaningless, I'm meaningful. If you have a relationship with me, then I will redeem you. So people misunderstand. Chazal say, for example, a Dovka boy, right? That kol adavik b'talmidei chachamim my love akasav kilu nidbuk b'shchid amamish. You could tina that could be very misconstrued. It's like the more you worship my ego, the more you have the shchina. <laughs> so you have to understand the kodesh revolt has a very profound emes. If the tachlis is my sin, did it b'tachtoinim? So why are you making distinctions b'chla? Maybe it's the other way around. So you're saying you need a structure. That's what he's saying. So a structure you need. But what's the exaltedness? Maduatis Nasu. What's this absolute exaltedness? 
You say Moshe is a different Madrega. Aaron is a different Madrega. So, so he says, a Nasi as a practical thing, you're running the company fine. So the truth is, Moshe was on of Ma'id. That's the truth. But this was Kairach's in the whole Musag of Isnasus is a corrupt Musag after the Menagla. Because the Taklis is Maisa. Is Kairach right or Kairach wrong? Yours into Maisa. No. Fakert. He was the ultimate Chassid. He was the ultimate. No, Fakert. That I know. But <laughs> for Kate, he was saying, Mice is the main thing. Did it with the Gashmi. Ayid is Ayid. Betoichem Hashem. Was Hakim Hashemik. Fine. Moshe, you have a good head. You're Gewaldic. You're Ruchnik. But in this world, Betoichem Hashem is in Gashmi. The farmer is as big as you. Maybe he's bigger than you. No, he felt that there's a corruption that's taking over Klai Yisrael. Dafka after the Miragla. I understand if Judaism was based on spiritual awareness and enlightenment and learning and intellectualism. Fine. But if it's not, if it's based ultimately on Dira B'Tachtoinim, everybody is really equal. <laughs> you have a better head, fine, teach. But there's no Hisnasus Be'etzim. You're quoting a Gemara that was written after Kairach, Rabbi Yosef. <laughs> he didn't learn Maseches Gitten. He was at Hamid Chacham, but at Managlum also Hamid Chacham. Everybody was Hamid Chacham. I know. He knew there had to be. He knew there had to be Moira Rov. He knew there had to be people that would discuss over people. Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? What's the steamer? As a technical role, he had no problem. But the awe of Moshe Rabbeinu, the respect for Moshe Rabbeinu, the Ein Aroich of Moshe Rabbeinu, the exaltedness of the Dush of Moshe Rabbeinu. Let's see, let's see what Moshe says. It'll, it'll, it'll be clear. He goes into, he goes into another few Pratim, but I want to get to the main point. So let's go to Seif Hey, which is page 1052. One, so so turn, basically, turn basically a page. Go to 1052 Sifei. I'm going to read a little fast because I want to get to the Nekud. So, and Moshe answered, Kairach, wait till the morning, and Hashem will let everybody know who belongs to him, and whoever is holy is going to bring close to him. In other words, he's going to let know who's supposed to be a Levi and who's supposed to be a Kayan. Vasep is morning. Moshe said, let's wait till the morning. Boiker. In the morning, God will let us all know. Rashi Zog, at the top of us, Moshe Ben Adzei Geisim, Vartem Biz Boiker, Alev Zez, on the Weile Ken and Shuvaton, based to Weisen, as Punkt, wie die Grenitzen mit Valcha der Eberstadt, von Anne getelt, zwischen Erev und Boiker, Ken Kainen nicht zu sterben. Und als euch Ken Kainen nicht mehr Wattel machen, das, was wir hier bav, die Bodel, Aden, wir ja auf der Laden, like Dusche, Kedosh, Kedosh. One reason is, Moshe wanted to give them a chance to do Shuvah. Sleep over the night, you'll wake up in the morning, you'll be normal, you'll stop fighting. Yeah? You know, a couple gets into a big fight, go to sleep, we'll talk tomorrow. <laughs> you don't have to fight. Oh, boy. And then actually says a deeper shot. Moshe was telling them, Is there any chachem, any scientist, who can blur the boundaries between night and day? Between morning and evening, between sunrise and sunset, there's boundaries in the world. Sorry. There's an orbit, there's a solace, there's a lunus, and there's day and night. I want day to be night and night to be day. There's boundaries in nature. The ocean remains the ocean, dry land remains a dry land. A dog is a dog, and an elephant is an elephant. And a kayan is a kayan, and a levi is a levi, and his soul is a yisrael. There's one Kayan Gadol. It's essential, but let's put it this way. The sequence of the DNA of every person is different. And I cannot blur those boundaries. Boiker, learn from the morning. That's what Rashi says. Debate the 
was done and in front the gvulis was still for other division by Kurunarif. The first reason, Tshuva, it says you could do in one moment, but I have to wait till the morning. And you say, well, some people don't do right away, well, some people won't do till the morning also. So maybe give him a week. The second reason, the Mechlekas of Kairach was during the day. <clears throat> That's what Chazal says. So you said, just wait till night. When the sun sets, you'll see right away the boundaries. What do you have to wait till the next morning? Ich <laughs> Also, where did Moshe answer Kairach's complaint? If the Sikh is correct, that Kairach was saying something fundamentally right after the story of the Miraglim, Moshe never responded to that. Moshe just showed that Aaron was right and there was no nepotism. Through the story with the Kairach burning the incense and the 250 people got consumed in the flames, he showed that he was right. But he didn't explain why he's right. Kairach was asking a fundamental question. So I'll prove to you I'm right, I'm going to kill you. Through killing somebody, you don't win an argument. You understand? You ask me a question, I punch you in the face. So you could punch in the face, but you didn't win an argument. So Moshe says, I'll swallow you up, you'll all get burnt. Fine. <laughs> so you're bigger and stronger and you have access to God. But explain to me, there's a contradiction in Judaism. Also, he complained not only about Aaron, also about Moshe. That Moshe is a melech. So you have to say that Moshe did give him an answer. The answer in the words, Biker, look in the morning, wait till the morning, Biker v'yayda Hashem, he was saying something very, very powerful. What was he saying? And I just want to bring it out in a sentence and then you'll see it inside. The Miraglim were, the, the Miraglim sinned because as a result of the Miraglim, we learned the truth. Nisava Kaddish Baruch Huli is We live in a world of Misa. We live in a world of Gashmi and that's the Tachlis. But there's a big danger here. And the Miraglim knew about it. Kairach picked up on their mistake and he went to the other extreme. And that's known as the danger of Judaism losing its soul. Some of you know about this very well. Judaism becoming technical. Action, 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 the physical world. And ecstasy is not experienced. Meditation, oneness, spirituality, transcendence, internal transformation. Where is that Judaism? It's a checklist. It becomes a checklist. The Miraglim were wrong. And Kairach was equally wrong. So the story of Shlach and Kairach, it's not just a story about an event. It's a story about two polar dangers that can happen to Judaism. And that balance is so delicate because every day I can become one of the Miraglim. And I could become one of people's, of one of Kairach's people. And the truth exists in the space between them, and in the tension and paradox between them, and in the truth that comes out in between those two spaces. Like Shneik Suvma Makhishim Zazah, right? There's two psalms that contradict each other, polar opposites. So why do you have to, why do you have to have two psalms that contradict each other and then bring in a Shatchan to make peace? Just bring me the third Pasuk. The answer is why. We say every morning, yeah? You remember this? What do you need? A contradiction and then bring in reconciliation. You understand why? Poshat. If you bring in the third Pasuk, you'll never understand what you're really saying. First, you have to understand one extreme because there's a truth there. Then you pull back, yin and yang, you pull back and you go to the other extreme because there's a truth there. <laughs> but I, there's a truth here, there's a truth there and they're two opposites. Ah, you'll be a cause of a shlishi. And say, there's a truth there. And there's a truth there. But if one truth excludes the other truth, it's not the truth. <laughs> That's the cause of a shlishi. Cause of a shlishi is not just to make peace. It's to bring together the paradoxes. The Miraglim were right. And then we learned that the Miraglim were wrong. <laughs> they were dead right and they were dead wrong. They're dead wrong, so Kairach says, Okay. So let's pull the other way. Let me tell you what's right. <laughs> and he's also right. 
because he's opposing the Miraglim, and they were wrong. But he comes out to be dead wrong. So the Miraglim are right, but they're wrong. <laughs> and that's exactly the healthy tension that challenges the person to become the person he or she is supposed to become, and the Jewish people to become the people they're supposed to become. And we have here a fabulous, fabulous meditation on two opposite dangers in life. You know, very often Jews speak against Eastern disciplines who focus on meditation and transcendence, and you live on a mountain, and you're secluded from the world. Huh? And you don't talk for years. Because we believe in talking and talking and talking. Somebody once asked Eli Wiesel if Judaism has a tradition of silence, because everybody's always talking. He said, yes, but we don't talk about it. You know, they say about a Jew who became a Buddhist, he went to India, and he went to an ashram, and they said, you know, every five years you could say two words. So after the first five years, the guru asks the Jewish kid, no, food bad. Okay, he said his two words. Five years later, bed horrible. Five years later, I quit. The guru says it's about time. All you've been doing since you came is complaining. So we dismiss it. We dismiss it as essentially lahav the latin of the miraglam. Pruervu, get married, build a house, build a family, live in the world. Comes Kairach and says, ooh, really? If that's the tachlis, madu it is nasa. Moshe's a different Indian, Aaron is a different Indian. They all have different jobs. Everybody's equal. So he pulls the exact opposite. He says, if Diri B'tachtoinim is serious, so Moshe and the farmer are taka equal. And there's a truth in what he's saying. There's a truth. Because B'toicham Hashem, you have to do what God wants from you. And he wants me to be in this farm, in this world. This is my body, this is my life. But there's also an untruth. That's the sivov. Chazal have an expression. What's tshuva masim toivim? Tshuva masim toivim. Says that tshuva mitzvahs. And is mevayer ma'isa mitzvahs can zayin in hazal oifin as is an nit toivim meirim. They liked in it. Chachas oich dan zayin as a mitzvah. Zayin chazal medayik to zayin tshuva masim toivim do the chlichtik tshuva zayin the ma'isim toivim meirim. Zayin chazal medayik to zayin tshuva masim toivim do the chlichtik tshuva zayin the ma'isim toivim meirim. He doesn't say tshuva and mitzvah, it's tshuva masim toivim. An evan toiv is a sparkling diamond. It's shining. So Alter Rebbe says masim toivim is not just actions that are mitzvahs. It's masim toivim u meirim. You can have mitzvahs, but they don't shine. He's going to explain what that means. So masim toivim means this through tshuva, your masim become bright, luminescent. They cast light. Amashalev dem is funavonim toivim was am nevzich blotter. You know what blot is? Mud. You have diamonds submerged or found in mud. When the diamond is in mud, not only is it not shining, but the light is eclipsed by darkness, by, 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 by the dirt, by the filth. True. If I'm a diamond connoisseur and I take a look, I know this is worth... This is worth six million dollars. <laughs> it's worth six million dollars. Nobody else will see it because the characteristics are there. The power is there, but the light is not there. The shine is not there. Certainly, you don't want to display this in your store because it's going to be a turn off. Because not only is it not light, it's actually dark. Al says echen mitzvus. The same is true with mitzvus. In yonam is lahaysif erba olam. Frana ben amovas lefisho begilas ein zehepech in yonam. The limit of turning came a mitzvah from a rasha is not enough as they make it lichtik, but other rabbi they make it a grace of them chayshuk and helam and velz and meisuf chayes and klipas. Or not enough the turning mitzvah from a rasha as they say the turning mitzvah shaloy l'shmatz lipnias. Or can it be gam b'muchesh as b'shas as velz the lichtik kavon and turning mitzvahs can the mensch their fun sukum and seyeshes and gaiva filling dig by zich the egen a mile of as they say is and schwerigkeit not mekayim when the mitzvah. Or befragt noch jemand, ist mir kein Mitzvah behidur, weil das ist gar der Hepech von ihnen am Mitzvah. Mitzvah ist verloschen, zauf so, wie ich durch ein Mitzvah wird man behaft mit den Eberstern, aber durch Jesus und Geiger wird man nach Mann und Lassan abgerissen von den Eberstern. Der Eberstern sagt, ich verbal Geiger, ein Anniveau, hier geil im Lader. 
I'll just read and I'll explain. Behelum of a pnemis is a demo tato mitzus the far right up kepaskin and shulchanadach. As a filler, a shagam of the flan and tatum, the Vistaf and Makaim sein mitzvus. On Hotchers, the Weil is a Durk sein tatum mitzvus, Mesif Chayas and Klippe, is a Bespette, and a red Chuviton, and a red Gewiss Chuviton, Vorum Loyedachem and Unidach, well in the Nitsuzza Sakdusha von sein tatum mitzvus, and is going to be Venom von Klippe, and on a Belichten. A Bekolzman of Nitkitankin Chuvin sein tatum mitzvus, wie an Evan Teuf, was is in Blotter. Is ein tatum mitzvus, wie an Evan Teuf, was is in Blotter, und sie machen nach Gresse dem Chöchig Beulam. You hear what he's saying? Mitzvahs, Torah and Mitzvahs bring light into the world. But sometimes, just like the diamond, it could be covered over with mud, and when you see it, there's no light. Not only that, it's the opposite of light. All the characteristics are there. <laughs> the truth is there. But there's no light. What does that mean in a person's life? When Torah and Mitzvahs are divorced, from inner refinement, from inner work, from inner transformation, sometimes like a diamond, not only does it not add light, it can actually add darkness. That's what it says in Svarim, I can give chiyos to the klippus through my Torah mitzvahs. He said, you see the person's life. Through learning Torah, I can become more arrogant. Through my mitzvahs, I become more arrogant. I become more judgmental. It's because I'm more from that I'm more judgmental. If I wouldn't be so from, I wouldn't be such a judgmental person. <laughs> if I wouldn't be learning so much, I wouldn't be arrogant. My Torah mitzvahs themselves become used. They used. They become missiles to feed my venom, my arrogance. Like the Gemara says in, in Tainas, a Torah could become a poison for somebody. It's Maisif Gaiva. It's Maisif Yeshus. I'm holier than thou. Sometimes it's used mamish in a way, like it's called Lakanter. Sometimes a Russia does Torah it's a Torah mitzvahs and it says it's Moisif Chayas and Klipsa, even not a Russia, just to Loy Lishma. There's no real kavana and I become more arrogant. Faket, I say, look at, I look at myself with, with this pride and dignity. It's the opposite of a mitzvah. The point of a mitzvah is to connect with Hashem. <laughs> Through Yeshes and Gaiva, you become disconnected because Hashem says, I can't live with a Bal Gaiva. So the mitzvah itself is helping me disconnect <laughs> from God. It says in Shulchan Aruch that even a Rasha should continue doing mitzvahs and always do Torah mitzvahs even Shalai Lashma because it's still a diamond. And one day you'll do tshuva and everybody will do tshuva liyidachim and nidach and everything is going to be sublimated. But at the moment, the diamond is in mud. In simple English, it means all elements of religion and ritual and Judaism can be practiced in a way that even though the action itself is holy and sacred and it's a diamond and it's God's will, but the mindset is contaminated. The inner consciousness makes it dirty, makes it filthy. There's no refinement. Instead of seeing ruchni's oil, light, edelkeit, divinity, what's coming across is negativity and judgment and, and, and egotism and haughtiness. It's very intense what he's saying. Comes a Jew and he has a good taina. Who cares? Who cares if my mitzvahs are beautiful or ugly, bright or dark? That's all giluyim revelations. But the Ratzon Hashem is in the mitzvah. My suik and I'm building a home for God, for His essence. My consciousness, my spirituality, I don't care if it's technical, there's no soul. The soul is all your appreciation, your spirituality. But Hashem's Ratzon is dira b'tachtoinim through the physical world. So the main thing is the technical thing. You got it done. Boom. That's the bottom line. Look at the bottom line. Stop talking about my mindset. Take a company. The guy is giving the money. I don't care what he's thinking. He's arrogant. He's not arrogant. He's filthy. He's not filthy. There's parts of him that are immoral. In other words, so it's divorced from my soul. But Atmos is here. And God's essence is not about consciousness and spirituality. The Ratzon Elyon is, it says in Shulchan Aruch, you should continue to learn Torah mitzvahs. 
at least in many of these cases. Not Lakante, fine. Not Almanas Lakante. Huh? There's dirty money. <laughs> if the, is the end for them that this is a mistake? It's missing a major truth. The Ratzin alien is not not Evkiyam a mitzvah, not Echev Kavonas a mitzvah. For the Mindir Loi Betachtoinim, and that's Vein Yonim, but of Machina did a lot smusse, and the Etzim so Dartin Stein begili as a Zaina Lichtike did. Und bei dieser Seine, die Dinge sind eine Lichtige, das sind seine Lichtige Mitzwes. Mitzwes, welche bei Leichten und Edlen aus den Menschen mit der Welt, was er nimmt. It's true, the Kavana of Zdira Betachtainem. So imagine you build a beautiful, beautiful palace, mansion for your wife, for God. And everything is there, one thing. It's dark, it's pitch dark. So nicht kein Dinge, I built the home, it's pitch dark. And it smells bad. And it's filth. The did is there. It may even have the most expensive thing, but it's pitch dark. There's something missing in the dinner. That's, that's Chazal instituted. You should light candles before Shabbos. Says why? Because to have the meal at night. But Chayshech is against Shalom Bayis. So you have it in Allah too. So the Kavana of Dira B'Tachtoinim is not just to have a house. I can say there's a house here. It should be a bright house. You walk in. It's bright. You can appreciate what's in the house. It's beautiful. The aesthetics is not irrelevant. You say, I'll build you a house, but the house, is, there's no furniture, and it's pure dark. It's a very poor dinner. So the dinner lay is buried, but the is not just I built the house, I did the mitzvah. But that you should be able to see your spouse, you should be able to see the king, you should be able to see Hashem there. You should be able to see the Teichen HaMitzvah, you should be able to see the Edelkeit of it. He says, not just there should be a Dira, it should be a Lichtike Dira, a Gishmak Dira. You see that the Teichen HaMitzvah refines the person. That has to do with Kavona. Mitzvahs that make your life bright, that make your life refined. So the Miraglim pulled to one extreme and he said, Ruchnius, Ruchnius, Ruchnius. Okay, Moshe said, no, Gashmius, Gashmius, Gashmius. So Kairach said, oh, gosh, me is, madu at this nasu. So Moshe said something very heavy. And that is, there's a big danger of Judaism losing its soul, of Judaism becoming technical, ritualistic. Even if I'm not a rush, I'm not a bad person, I'm doing everything. But it's a checklist. My body is doing it, the mitzvah I'm doing, schar I get, the rotten I did, I put on the tefillin, I ate the matzah, I follow the, I follow the system. I'm a religious Jew. I built a dida. I'm doing it with my body, I'm doing it with my animal soul. But who is the lichtekeit? The light I don't feel, the light I don't see. Say, who cares? Who cares? So you don't feel, anayama is an ego, spiritual egotism. So that's part of the kavon of the Yerba The inner transformation, the inner consciousness is not an extracurricular activity that egotistical spiritual people need and that's what the Menaglam. That's essential to the kavona. That the diamond should be bright. That the diamond should shine. Not just say, the diamond is there even though it's covered over and you completely can't see it. That the relationship should be there. MS, if I only go into the relationship and the kavana and ruchni is nothing else. That's the mistake of the miraglam. But when Judaism becomes a technical religion, it's robotic. I do everything and that's what it's about. And there's no true oneness with the Rabbi Nishra. I don't see the beauty of the dir. There's no light in the dir. There's no lichtikait. What does that mean lichtikait? What does it mean lichtikait? That has to do with how much I work on myself. My mindset, is it refining me? You know the Maise, right? The Alte Rebbe, when he was, they came to arrest him, he was wearing tefillin. It was in the morning, he was davening. It was after Sukkot, Tov Kofnon 1798. They came to arrest him, the Tsarist government. Were very serious, it was like a capital, uh, capital uh, accusations, treason. So the, the, the guard who came in to arrest him, he saw the tefillin, Alte Rebbe, Made with his hand, and he left. So somebody said, "What just happened?" So the Rebbe said, "Sishtet befeis habefedish in gemara and brachas." It says, "Viyaru viyiru kolam meyaretz." The nations will seek Hashem, Hashem nikra alecha. Viyaru mimeka, Amar Rebbe Lazar elut filun shabereish. 
What do you mean they'll see that Hashem's name is on you? They'll be scared. So this Jew tells the Alter Rebbe, Ich trug euch tefillin. Okay, no hat nisch kemoyde famer. I also wear tefillin. Nobody gets scared. So the Alter Rebbe right away says, the Gemara doesn't say, Elu tefillin sha'al harosh. The Gemara says, Elu tefillin sha'birosh. It doesn't say tefillin on the head. It says tefillin inside the head. He says, you, you wear tefillin on your head. <laughs> You understand the vart? That's the vart. That's maisim toivim. Elu tefillin shabirosh. That has to do with kavona. The tefillin is the same tefillin, you're right. Moshe's tefillin, the Baal Shem tefillin, the Alter Rebbe's tefillin, the Arizal, they all put on tefillin, I put on tefillin, the same maisim mitzvah. You eat matzah, I eat matzah, Moshe eat matzah. You hear shoifer, I eat shoifer. And that's the beauty of Yiddishkeit. Dir betachtoinim. We're dealing with the transformation of the physical life and physical world and physical and physical body. But the tefillin shabirosh is also negate to dira betachtayna. Because a dira, a home for Hashem, doesn't just mean there's a home where he lives. It means it's a bright home. It's a luminescent home. Where you could see your spouse. You could see, you could connect. You could feel the relationship. And for that you need light. So now let's see how Moshe said this to Kairach. Zayin and Dosa given the answer for Moshe Ben of Tanis Kairach va Dosa. Emes Taka Maisu Iker over the Kim Mitz Mitzes Dav Zayin Eifim from Boike as all Zayin Lichtike Mitzvus. Vachas on bringing to the Yoda Havaye the Yedias Vigilia Lekus. Men can't take the Kaim Zayin Mitzvus Eich on the Lichtike Kavana. But the Zayin it can Lichtike Mitzvus Boike. And they bring it to Yedias Gilia Lekus the Yoda Havaye. So Moshe says Kairach. The first thing is Boike the Yoda Hashem. We could do everything in the nighttime, but it's dark. <laughs> Boiker. The main thing is it should also be with a brightness. V'yoyda Hashem. It should bring you to knowledge and awareness and intimacy with the divine. Intimacy with the divine means I shed my ego. And I let myself become part of infinite oneness. That's avoid pnimis. That's not technical. For this I need to be able to deal with my brokenness and my ego and my insecurities and my pain and as Rabbi Yosef would say, my trauma. Did I quote you correctly? I have to be able to deal with all this. I have to be able to open myself up. Can I say that through this mitzvah I can experience the divine in a deeper way? Where am I exper- what, what divine? Who divine? As a result of my davening, I became a, a more authentic person. There's Yidiyas Hashem inside of me. There's Gilea Lekos. Who cares? Say the words and finish. Say the words. Just say the words. Get it over with. Knock it off. <laughs> Don't knock it off. Do it slow. That's the danger. Boiker. Und das ist euch rasch im Namen in den zwei Tagen, weil was mein Schöben und sein Essen warten bis Boiker. Alef Shema Yachzudu Ben with these all haben shoes to Chuvatan. Chachas Chuvah came and tumbled shaita chado b'riga chada. Had they all been Moshe Ben and Amzim and as his father zich have biker the kachuva, a licht the kachuva. Was dam pael the chuva as the meister mitzvah on zayn toivim. Ech when zayn chuva comes from Yiddish ha'einish is many meichel of zayn avedes. Das is aber noch nit mezachich the menschen. Er verbleibt in zayn yeshes. Es darf sein, er lichte Ketschuwe, bis Ketschuwe me ave rabe. Was dann darf ke is deines nasem like a zochis, es wirkt auf des deines mamish. On a vade of the mitzvahs will chazan given in the gallows, vis doines betecha klippes, as es on the sabach venel a zochis, on eben meir zayn. Beis, boiker, amalai moshe, gvulis chalaka kodesh baruchu bai lama. Moshe ben en zemen amas given the maile von lichte ke mitzvahs of the mitzvahs will chazan in the gallows betecha klippes. Chach eich zez an a mitzvah sashem, mit the marshal von erev of boiker. Erev von Böcker sind in beiden dem Eberstens bei Schäfenischen. Und Davke von dem Erev mit dem Böcker zusammen wird Joim Echad. Und er soll sagen, dass es Jema Kippurim. Und von deswegen ist Erev finster und Böcker lichtig. So now you have the two explanations in Rashi, what Moshe meant. And they both indicate this truth. The first thing is, let's wait till morning in order to do Tshuva. He said, you can do Tshuva right away. Or you may not do Tshuva for a month or a year or ten years. But he was, he was indicating something. Of course you could do tshuva right away, but in tshuva itself, there's a dark tshuva and a bright tshuva. Tshuva that makes masim toivim, that the masim should be light, bright, you need 
a certain tshuva. There's a tshuva, I'm afraid of punishment. What does that mean? We don't have a real connection. I'm afraid you're going to punish me. It's like a husband who makes trouble, but he's afraid of the consequences, so he apologizes. The relationship doesn't disturb me. One of the interesting things that happens in marriage therapy is the wife says something that the husband did or didn't do. And the husband says, I see how much it hurt you, so I apologize. And she gets very upset. Why? It hurt me, <laughs> but it didn't hurt you. <laughs> you understand? It hurt me, but it didn't hurt you. So you have tshuva, I'm afraid of the punishment. And I'll forgive you. It doesn't refine you. You're not a transformed person. <laughs> you're, a, you're a practical person. You don't want to get punished. You still remain in your yeshes. You did shuva, you apologized, but you didn't get it. You didn't get it. <laughs> you're not in. You didn't see how you, how you were broken from it. I hurt you, I'm sorry. Especially I'm afraid of the consequences. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I could do tshuva, but I still, I did shuva technically again. The diamond is there, but it's, the, the yeshes is still there. Yeshes means the haughtiness, the arrogance. You could do everything right, but the core is, the core is, is a skyver. You understand? There's a diamond there. There's a diamond. But ultimately, there's so many layers of, 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 of filth. So he says the tshuva needs to be boiker. Tshuva out of love. And then the Gemara says, the sins become mitzvahs through that. The sins themselves become mitzvahs. And certainly the mitzvahs, were, which were in Galos, in Klippus, they certainly become mitzvahs. They're certainly transformed. The second thing is, there's boundaries between night and day. Meaning, night is also created by Hashem. It says in Medesh, Vayedev vayivoyker, Edev and Baiker, Yoy Mechud is Yom Kippur. But this is Erev, this is Baiker. It's a completely different world. There's Gvulais. Huh? Different energies. Night is also a Bria. Night is also Choshev. How does that answer? Doch. We bald as mitzvahs is in Yonim, is on leichte, is on lein meisem teuvim um eidim, is alef. Da an ilu eichin meisem mitzvahs um meishra beine of the mitzvahs, von alle andere jidn und de ilu is an ilu she beine adeich. Beis mit af mekabel sein alle aspas von meishra beine of his pashtus in de leishu bechol dore ve dore. Nit bleis bine geya avoidus am meich wa lev, nor eich bine geya meisem mitzvahs. O befrat is on lein meisem teuvim um eidim. This is the answer to Kairach. Of course everybody is holy. Of course Hashem exists in every person. Not only in their soul, but also in their body. And every Jew through his or her Maisa mitzvahs accesses Atzimus itself. Betoichem Hashem. But essential to the function of mitzvahs is they should shine with divinity. Maisim toivim umeirim. So therefore even in the mitzvahs themselves, in the Maisa, there's something extraordinary and unparalleled about Moshe Rabbeinu's mitzvahs. Because of his being Isha Elikim. And furthermore, you need to become a student of Moshe Rabbeinu. This is what Moshe and Aaron give the Jewish people. Because since Moshe and Aaron were true conduits for Hashem, Moshe in his humility and his bittel was truly transparent. So he can, not only he teaches you Torah, not only he teaches even spirituality, but even the Maisa HaMitzvahs, you need to be a Talmud of Moshe. Madua Tisnasu. Even in the Gashmias. Why? Everyone is equal. Because essential to the Dira B'tachtoinim is consciousness. Transformation. The soul alive. And Moshe Rabbeinu. And the extension of Moshe in every dirt. It says it's extension of Moshe. is B'chol Dara V'dara. To help the mitzvahs become not just technical, but transformative, divine. My connection with Moshe, my connection with Aaron allows me to be elevated, to be inspired, to be able to see the diamond inside of me and remove the mud that may be eclipsing my light. This is dafke the tisnasa. There's two types of exaltedness. An exaltedness which is arrogant. I'm better than you. I'm bigger than you. 
In that sense, Kairach is right. There's an exaltedness that's not about arrogant. It's that there's taka something greater that the person could give. And Kairach says, the greatest thing is Gashmi. The mistake of Kairach is Boiker V'yoyed Hashem. Of course there could be mitzvahs done at night. What does that represent? There's a dira b'tachtoinim, but it's dark. It's pitch black. Remember, then at night it was dark. It was really dark. You had to light a candle. There were so many stars. Moshe carried an army The coronary play Moshe. The chiddush of Moshe and the tesnasu. Why you need to be makabal for Moshe, why Moshe is exalted, is after the miraglim. Because... Moshe and Aaron embodied and taught. Judaism is not just ritualistic, it's not just technical, it's not just I'm doing things, even though I'm doing very, very holy and sacred things. It's a divine experience. There's an inner oneness I'm connecting to. You become a conduit for infinity in this world. This requires personal work, internal transformation. Here comes the lesson for every person from this whole story. There are those who say that the main thing in Judaism is you have a heart. You want to think I have a Jewish heart. The main thing is a Yiddish In 1962, the Rebbe says this was a very prevalent idea. I have a Jewish heart, so now you're going to tell me Kashrus, uh, Shabbos, Taras HaMishpachim, Mezuzah, Tefillin, Mincha, Maidev, give me a break. I'm a heart, I'm emotionally connected. Rachman Aliba Boy. God wants the heart. That's the expression. <clears throat> huh? Yeah. Somebody once said, why, a cardiologist once said, why do Jews have so many heart issues? Because Jews are walking around all day, says, I'm a Jew in my heart. So there's so much pressure on their heart. You have to distribute your Judaism to your arms and your legs and your fingers and your head and your torso, and then the heart will be a little uh, calmer. But that's one, one point. The main thing is, there's an emotional, there's a sense of belonging and, and camaraderie, and uh, inside I have faith. And Geval de Ketayna. Frana Zayna Vestayna. Now you have the other extreme. As Medaf Hobben blows my Sahamitzvahs. Of course, of course, uh, God doesn't only want the heart. But the main thing is, Misa, you know, show up, <laughs> show up, and do your job. The opposite extreme. To transform yourself. Avoidah Shabalev means to avoid the inside my emotions. To work with my emotions, my attitudes, my moods, my perspectives, my feelings. Limud Achsidus, what's Limud Achsidus? Real Limud Achsidus is you're learning about your inner workings, your inner relationship. Maisa Mitzvahs, you look in Shulchan Aruch and you know everything to do. You learn Mishnah Brura, or whatever Svarim of Halacha you're learning, and you know everything to do, and you know exactly when to say Amen, when not to say Amen, when to say Kedusha, if you're in the middle of Birchis Krishma, what to say, what not to say, how to do Hagbah, how to get an Aliyah, how to have a kosher kitchen, what to do on Shabbos, and it's a Meredik. God doesn't want a heart only. He wants my son mitzvahs. So now, what do I have to now go into limud achsidus and avoid the We don't need that. Hamaisu ik let into his dotayda. How to say that avoid the avzayin nit vishitas hamenaglim as meken yotzis hametruchni yisalein. Or nit vishitas koyrech vaados as meken yotzis hamet maisalein. Now be the zachin musan zayin sezam. So you have it two polar opposites. Both have a truth, and both are wrong. The truth of the Miraglim is spiritual consciousness is the main thing. It's wrong. God doesn't only want your heart. <clears throat> he wants your goof. He wants your Nefesh Bahamas. He wants your Maisa. He wants the world. So now I go to Kairach and I say, that's it. And I could lose the soul. I could lose the consciousness. That's the mistake of Kairach. I can have diamonds but the diamonds are unrefined, they're not cultivated. The truth is, truth exists in the fusion, in the space, in the tension, in the paradox, and ultimately in the oneness. 
I'm not going to stay in the clouds of glory. Yes, I go out to a world and my work may sometimes be very tedious and it could seem very robotic. And a major focus is actions within a physical environment and a physical society that can eat up my soul. But don't lose your soul. Never ever make the mistake of Kairach and say Moshe and Aaron, they don't play a role. The main thing in Judaism is just physical stuff. No, the Moshe and Aaron and the Moshe and Aaron inside of you represents the link to heaven. The soul. That's the Tasnasu. The soul in me always has to remain exalted. Not because the function is to neglect the body, not to neglect the body, but to be able to always infuse it with an inspiration, with a light, with an enlightenment. He's saying you saw a living example from the Rebbe, says my father-in-law, the Rebbe Dayatz, whose Chagagula was Yudbeis Tamos. He was liberated then from Stalinist imprisonment and death sentence. They sent him to exile and they commuted the sentence. They let him out in 1927. He says you saw his Mesidus Nefesh both, on both things. First of all, from Misa. A Jewish child in the Soviet Union should learn Aleph Beis. You could say it was not... Uh, <laughs> It's not deep spiritual consciousness. It's learning olive base. Or a Jew should do one mitzvah, even though the person was not ready for the refinement and the deep kavanas. And even from mitzvahs itself, he was far. But the Rebbe says, the Rebbe had Mesidus Nefesh, he should do one mitzvah. He put the same kaychus with Mesidus Nefesh to spread Torah and Pnimiyas HaTorah and Avedis HaTfila. What's Avedis HaTfila? To teach people how to daven, how to connect. To work on themselves. And this is the way that the Rebbe has given us for all of us and the Shaykh Tzimun Helchim Bekwaisov. Men shall turn in beide kavim. Punt wie me daf turn in a maise uwe iker. Daf man euch zen as de maise zal zayn rein. A reine und a edele. Was das tut sich auf durch limut pnimiyas a teure und a vedas a tfila. So those who follow in his footsteps ought to embrace this fusion. Ha maise uwe iker is critical. The power of a mitzvah, of a maisa. I will say it's a physical action. Who cares? No. This is the purpose. But that includes something else. That the maisa should be pure, clean, edel, refined. And for this, one requires the learning of pnimiyas ha That deals with the inner element of ta'ira, the soul of ta'ira. And not just learning it, I could learn it intellectually. People could learn the very spiritual stuff. It doesn't mean anything. Their ego and trauma remains intact. Avoid the means you have to work on it. You've got to work it out. I've got to internalize it. That's what Avoid means. It's not just, I learned now. So I learned about consciousness. It has to go into my nervous system. It has to go into my body. And this, as we know, it's very easy to run here, run there. Because once you have a movement, the Yiddishkeit, that focuses on Maisa, 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 you could lose the soul. So let's just talk about soul, and you could lose the Maisa. And that's why Shlach and Kairach come together. There's the mistake of the Meraglim, and then there's the opposite mistake of Kairach, and there's a lesson. Avoid this, but also avoid this. Even though there's a paradox here. But it's not. And it's not just a question if you focus more on doing, or you focus more on learning. It's a focus I could do and I could learn. But what I'm learning, what am I learning? Am I learning and elevating my true consciousness? Because learning also could be soulless. I could learn technical stuff and I could even be intellectually creative. So I understand a lot of things. But the internal, the internal development and cultivation of the soul to go from night to day, from darkness to light, that's the, that's the key. This creates a home for Hashem in this world. What do we mean? 
The house includes both things. As Zalzayin adir elatz musay, and as the etzim Zalzayin begilui. It should be adir for Hashem's essence. And Hashem's essence is in the physical as much as in the spiritual. Sometimes more in the physical. But that the etzim should be revealed. <laughs> Shouldn't just say Hashem is here. Betoichem Hashem. But it's dark. God is here. But it's God, and nobody sees anything. We're davening, we're learning, we're doing everything. God is here. He's mama here. But nobody sees. <laughs> the glasses are tinted. The glasses are dirty. The etzim zilzayim begilui. Hashem's atzma should be manifest, be present. There should be a, a feeling, a revelation, a consciousness, a divine awareness. Yeah, who cares? Who cares? That's an ego thing. I need awareness. I need kind. You don't need anything. He's here. That's not the kavanah sabriya. Part of the did is it should be his galus atzmos. What's pshat? For this, I got to go deeper than my ego. I have to open myself up to the ain soif. This is what limud, real limud achsidus is. This is what avodah shabalev is. So shulchan aruch is the response to the miraglim, and chsidus and davening is the response to kaidach. <laughs> response to miraglim is you got to go to the physical world and do the ma'isa mitzvahs, and the response to kaidach is this nasus of Moshe and Aaron, the spiritual leadership and inspiration of Moshe and Aaron infuses klal yisrael with ruchnius. Because, yeah, it is important. It's not just everything is just physical and technical. That's not true. For this, you need Moshe and Aaron. And every person is Moshe and Aaron. Moshe and Aaron represents the spiritual beacons of light. Not just that Moshe is a good teacher, he has a good head. The leadership of Moshe is what helps Jews see the divine in the world because of Moshe himself, because of who Moshe is. Because Moshe was such a worked out person. The Tachta needs a soul. You've got to reveal the soul in the Tachta. And this tension we still see constantly. You see constantly. There's people who run away from Orthodox Judaism because they're very soulful. <laughs> they're very soulful and they're looking for spirituality. And they don't find that spirituality within. Huh? They don't see it not in learning Gemara, not in learning Halacha, and not in coming to Shul, and not in the Jewish lifestyle. They see sometimes the opposite. It's very technical, it's very ritualistic, it's even robotic, there's sometimes lifelessness, like a certain deadness sometimes. You know, the same thing, morning, yeah, Pesach, Shavu, Sukkot, Shoshan, Rabba, boom, 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 boom. Some people, it works perfectly. They love the structure, and other people, <laughs> I need experience. So they run, they run, to, they run to another place where they think they'll be able to find it more. I don't have a huh? I didn't let the Menorah. It was not lighting the Menorah. Lighting the Menorah was lighting up the souls of the Jewish people. So this is where we see constantly this challenge that when you when you create an infrastructure and you create structures, it could sometimes numb the soul, numb the creativity. It can deaden the, the inner experience. And sometimes it can even become outright boring, monotonous, meaningless, irrelevant, and sometimes even worse. In the name of religion, I can camouflage my insecurities, my ego, my mental illnesses, my OCD, my arrogance. In the name of religion, this is where the diamond becomes covered with mud. I use the Torah against Torah. I use the mitzvahs against mitzvahs. You understand? I use my religiosity to become dismissive, become judgmental remain isolated, justify my rage and my anger, and I have God on my side. So not only are the mitzvahs not opening me up to infinity, they're feeding toxicity. The mitzvah itself is holy, but the way I'm using it, I exploit it, I manipulate it. It's like people who use halachic systems to abuse and oppress, you know, whether it's women or men. I'm using the holy system to cover up crimes and injustice, you use words like covered HaTorah, or covered Talmud HaChamim, or covered Rabbonim, or, 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 or Das Torah, or uh, whatever it is you want to use. Authority, or Derech or uh, women have to listen to men. Huh? Whatever. And I, the ideas itself are holy ideas, beautiful ideas. They're diamonds. They're God's will. But be very careful. <laughs> I may be stuck in darkness, and in a Gehenna, and in the spiritual abyss, and an emotional poison, 
and in narcissism and in, I'm not going to use the word trauma, but that's what I want to say. I'm a completely broken individual. So I'm doing tight, I'm doing mitzvahs, but it's so wrapped up in layers and layers and layers of junk and dirt and filth. One day I'll do tshuva and the, the diamond will come out of the dirt. That's not a question. Teda mitzvahs will come out of the clippers. But right now my teda mitzvahs are stuck. They're trapped. They're trapped in shells and layers of toxicity. And you got to be very careful with that. Ah, you need boikas, a leichten. Right? So, uh, Okay. Is the diamond, when the is in the dirt, it is in its elements. You can you can twist it and say that's where it belongs, but it's, it's in its element. A diamond, a, yeah, a diamond. We want to polish it. Should it should shine? Are you typhus dinian? Huh? That is We don't know it. We're learning it. That's what we're learning. And listen, this is true to every person in their own level. It, it's true on so many different levels. Yeah, Boike V'yayda Hashem. What does Rashi say? Yeah. Oh, so in the Pasuk it says without a Vav. Boike without a Vav. So Rashi says, Hashem made boundaries. You can't make morning night. And you can't make Aaron unholy. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Baika without a vav, yeah. It says Baika without a vav. Yeah, it says in Chumash without, but I guess usually when we spell Baika, it's with a vav. Yeah. So what you spoke about just the rabbit is really beautiful. So you can't, you can't, so uh, Murag, the problem with the Muragam is that they were too much, like everything is just one. Yeah. So the Miraglim wanted to live in a cocoon of, of dvekas with Hashem, which is amazing. <laughs> and we all want that. A soul wants that. And we need that. We need that. But the purpose is not to shun your body, not to shun your animal soul, not to shun your emotions, even your difficult emotions, not to amputate part of my life. To include everything, to elevate it. Dirabit Achtoinim doesn't just mean the world outside of me, it means the world inside of me. Dirabit Achtoinim means the lowest parts of me. That's where Hashem wants to live. People make a mistake. Dirabit Achtoinim means, yeah, in Los Angeles and in London and in downtown Dallas. Downtown Dallas is good. <laughs> downtown Manhattan is also good. But the, some of the hardest Dirabit Achtoinim is my Tachtan. So the Dira B'tachtayinim means all my emotions and all my challenges and all parts of my body. Don't amputate it. Don't run away from it. Bring Hashem into it. Bring truth into it. That's the work that the Miraglim didn't want to do. <laughs> they didn't want to bring God down. They wanted to, lead, they wanted to go up to heaven, which is beautiful. So Kairach said, oh, if that's the tachlis, the darkness, that's where God wants to be. So then what's the advantage of Moshe and Aaron? They have more light? The tachlis is darkness. The tachlis is not darkness. The tachlis is transformed darkness. <laughs> they said if the tachlis is Gashmias, so then why Moshe and Aaron greater and such greatness? Why Tisnasu? On the contrary, I'm greater. I have more darkness than them. The purpose is tachtainim. I got more tachtainim. The purpose is dira betachtainim. To be megala alekus and tachtainim. That I need Moshe. That I need Aaron. That you need a connection to heaven. If you just go down to earth, as what did Meir Primishlan say? I'm a sugebun in oibin. Faltmanisht into. You understand? It's very easy. You go down and you fall. You fall into the mud. And the diamond goes into the mud because every soul is a chelik alakamimal and Torah mitzvahs is godliness. Do they, do they know how dark In we are? Do we so, know? so this is the valdik atayj. There's borders between night and day. Night and day are both God's creations. And God didn't only want night. Didn't only want day. He wanted night. By Erev ayi voyke yoyim echad. Yoyim echad is only through Erev. And Boika together. There's no Achdus Hashem without Erev and Boika. You need night and day. 
but you have to know the difference. This is darkness and this is light. How does Moshe Benu yeah, how does Moshe Benu help? help? Ah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how, how, what does Moshe Rabbeinu do to help? Because Moshe is an Isha Lekim. Moshe is an Isha Lekim. So, Moshe teaches a Jew about his own godliness. We're not aware of our trauma. <laughs> like it says in Tanya, Perik Beis, that a real Jewish leader, right, makes every Jew aware of his or her dveikus and ain't soif. And like it says in Tanya, Perik Beis, every Jew has a Moshe inside of him. What's the Moshe inside of me? The Moshe inside of me is that Nekud of Tisnaso. Huh? The Das. To stay connected. Boiker v'yoyda Hashem. You want the mitzvah to bring you to Yediyah Hashem. To Gilea Lekus. On a practical level it means if Torah and mitzvahs is not transforming me as an individual into a beautiful person, into a refined person, into an authentic person, I may be in darkness. I may be doing good things. There's a connection that I have. The relationship never ends, especially when you do a mitzvah. But I'm still in darkness. I'm in chayshech kafal and chupal. Chayshech of my gaiva, of my yeshes, of my stupidity, of my katnas, of my pettiness. You understand? That's the real concept of a Rebbe. Moshe Rabbeinu is the ultimate Rebbe. What's the real concept of a Rebbe? Not just to teach me intellectual things that I don't know, because he has a better head. That's a gewaldike Indian. And not even just to be an example of a very good person, but it's to, 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 to kindle the soul, to put your soul on fire, to be able to show you who you really are and what you're really capable of. They say the real function of a Rebbe is to bring you closer to God without getting in the way. Because <laughs> what's pshat? If a Rebbe is between you and Hashem, we don't believe in intermediaries, right? So a Rebbe never gets in between. He goes to the back of you and he pushes you. <laughs> like that. He doesn't, go, he doesn't go in front. He pushes you from the back. Boom. <laughs> that's the Polish way, don't Okay. That's the Polish way, don't no, what's mechabe? Mechabe means, I don't mean pushy as in pushy, I mean it doesn't get in between. No. And what's a mechabe means, it could be an intermediary and I come in between. Like, you need me to connect to... Sometimes you need a push. Like, like a marriage therapist who gets in between the husband and the wife. That's the worst thing in the world. The whole tachlis is to be able to talk to, to each other. You may need me, Right? But it's to talk to each other, you know, not to talk to me. <laughs> right? Good marriage therapist, in the middle of the therapy, they'll say, look at each other, don't look at me. Talk, talk to her, talk to him. A real tzaddik, it's not, come to me so I could bring you to Hashem. No, never. I want to teach you who you are. Because the re real Moshe Rabbeinu is one with every neshama, so it doesn't get in between. It's like the brain, the brain, of the, the brain doesn't get in between. You understand? Okay. I think I think it's from the real that the Muzaykhat is a Lakus because of Sifr Shomit. Yeah, the Rabbi Chaim Vital says that the Barizal was Zaykhat to his Asagis because of Simcha Shal So that means that. He activated. I'm just saying again. Simcha Shal, what's Simcha Shal Mitzvah? No, no, if you know the Pneumis of Sifr Shomit. Avada. Avada. Simcha Shal Mitzvah is. When you experience the pnimius of it. If it's a technical thing, what's the joy? You just do it. I shook a lulav. Simcha shal mitzvahs, I'm excited. I'm enthusiastic. Shabbos is Shabbos. Adavanin is Adavanin. But it has to be real. It's not just I start screaming. You know, there's people there. There was a year, Jabi Eichen and Gordon. It was a Gabba in 770. You know, Nachi Gordon for Meaningful Minute is uh, El Tezayda. So, uh, so uh, he was a very funny person. He had a very good sense of humor. <laughs> so Zayid, the ones came into 770. And his derech was to scream by Davin. He starts screaming, First try to talk nicely. You don't have to start screaming. He was joking. But his point was, we're not talking here about externally screaming. We're talking about an inner, an inner excitement. 
You understand what I'm saying? Now think how, how important this is for teenagers, for Bachram, or for girls. They could sit in yeshiva many years and learn all the things to do and not to do. They could also learn a lot of information. They could learn ideas. They could learn halacha, they could learn gemara, they can even learn machshava, they can even learn, they can learn a lot of beautiful things. But then you ask one question. Where are you? Where's your heart? Where are your emotions? And often it's completely not addressed. It's killed. Thinking about the shidduch. That's no, very, very important. Follow the system. It's good. You're doing good things and you're, you're learning good things and everything is holy and beautiful. But sometimes the person is not there. There's no avoid the There's no focus on it. Where are you in the process? How does it connect to you? How does it relate to your struggles? How does it relate to the earth inside of you? The earthiness in you is good. Not only the heaven in you. The Miraglim said the heaven is good. God wants to live in your, in your heart. He wants to live in those parts of you that you call toxic and lowly and earthy. That's what the means, toxic. It's, 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 it's lowly. That's where I want to live. Don't be afraid of that part. Bring it in over there. And don't, but don't, if you can't, don't discount, if you haven't succeeded yet, don't discount yourself. Don't discount that all for carrot. Never give up. Huh? Never give up. <laughs> That's part of the sin, by the way. That's yeah, the now the opposite extreme is kairach. Kairach, suddenly he worships the darkness. You understand? He worships the darkness. Then the Miraglim escaped darkness. And they made such a mistake because the kavan is edits. Takhtoinim. So he, well, let's go straight into the mud. <laughs> nah, that's not the vart. You want to bring in the light over there. So shainim, the takhtoinim should be a place of gili alakos, not a place of choshech where Hashem is present in darkness. God could be present in my heart, but it's dark. You don't want that. You have it even in a marriage. You can have a marriage, everybody does the right thing. You know, he fills his duties, but there's no passion. There's no life. There's no excitement, you understand? He's a good guy, she's good. They follow the ksuva, they do all the rules, everything is fine. They do Shabbos and Yom Tov. But what's missing? The chiyos, the, the, the excitement, the life. You're getting good training in this year. You're getting good training. <laughs> You're a bacha, so you could still be like the Miraglam a little bit. <laughs> the avoid of a bacha is to be like the Miraglam, to be in the midbar. But later, you, you got to go on to Eretz huh? So, so that's very deep. This, there was a Yid who came to the al Rebbe and he asked al Rebbe. Sometimes it's good to... That's very, by the way, it's very deep what just happened. <laughs> What's so deep? No, it means that the uh, means that the shop the mind is Listen, every person that relates to us, each one according to their own level. But in Simchas Beisasheva, only should should they weren't allowed to get involved. In other words, you can in other words that's the point where you're saying like by Torah. In other words, you have the you have to in time where only. Even though you're a Pashid, you have some Pashid Mitzvah, but it's not for you. That's the food. It's only for the Ene Ha'edah. It's not because anyone... Somebody's name gave him a higher Neshama than you. A father. Tisnasu is not exaltedness, I'm better than you. Fakert. Then it's not Moshe. <laughs> then it's Tam Gaiva. Tisnasus is... <laughs> and because he's completely bottled to Hashem... So his power is not his own. It's an expression of Hashem. Huh? He can bring up other. The moment my power is about me versus you, then it's dangerous. It's toxic. That itself is poison. Then Kairach is right. It's a different Tisnasu. Tisnasu means because Moshe was completely nullified, so he was a conduit for Hashem. So from Moshe you learn what it means, Bittl for Hashem. So... so an Eved Hashem, the ultimate Eved. So two things. So it's all about what Moshe does for the people. Because he has no Metziahs, no ego. And it teaches you who you really are. That's the Vart. On of Ma'id. Yeah. Yeah. The Mitha Rebbe says it's Mikala Adam. Because if you kicked off the, 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 the Nidrigi, 
Yeah. Anov ma'od mikol adam shal pnei hadama. What's the connection between Gimel Thomas with the Gimel Thomas, 1994? What's the connection? That's your wait for the fabrenga. I say, so didn't clear up C. The the Irish not only in the roof is, but Gashmi's motion also changed. He had Karen or me. Avada. What he hadn't explained it. He sees that I did the godly light. Because the because because kaidach taina that the light of Moshe is giluyim. It's not atzmos. And Atzmus is Tachtoinim Davka, and there everybody's equal. Moshe is not Be'in Aroich. That's his Taina. What do you need a Rebbe for? A Rebbe you need for Giluyim, but the Ik is Atzmus, Gashmi is. Maisa, what do you need a Rebbe for? Kairach was wrong, because Dine B'Tachtoinim means not that you're technical, that the Oy, the Salaich, the Tachtoinim Laichten. For that you need Giluyim Lekos. A real Rebbe is Megal Lekos, through his Bittel. For taste, not, it's not, it doesn't about smart. It's it's not a smart. It's experiential. Experiential. What's the clue about going through life in darkness without any? Without it's not going through life in darkness. It's embracing the tension, and embracing the darkness, and saying this is exactly where I need to be. Without that shavish, it doesn't want you to have a truth. There's a but there's a depth there. There's a like a, just like the miraglim had a depth. Kaidach had a depth. The depth is don't run away to Moshe Naren. Stay with the Tachtoinim, and over there you're equal to everybody else because this is where God is. But you're a chicken without a head. Oh, what's the Nukud is? The Nukud is Emes. Avada God is right here. But we all need a support system. We all need help. We all need inspiration, empowerment to be able to reveal the purpose. To be able to bring ourselves up from this place. To be able to reveal the meaning here. That's what support is. That's what real empathy is. That's what a real Rebbe is. It creates the connection, holding space with empathy for all the parts so that it, we, we could find the light ultimately inside there and not just remain, remain uh, stuck there. That's what us a real support system is. It's a deep, 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 deep debate here. It's not so bullshit. It's on many different levels, emotional, psychological, practical, spiritual. So who was the closest to say when I first came to, to the Rebbe? I couldn't believe that the whole world, that the whole world did the... Did, 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 ah, yeah, yeah. They say the Bhilo Padacha once said that before he came to the Alter Rebbe, before he learned Chassidus Chabad, he looked at the goof as disgusting. Once he heard the title from the Alter Rebbe, Psari Leka, that from my flesh I perceive Hashem. That the goof is a marshal for a lakus. He says, Ananda Derecheretz for the goof. But you're talking about another vart. Before I came, I didn't know how Elam Haba, how God will be able to find an Elam Haba that's good enough for me. Right? And then, my Shaila is Fakert. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We had an article from the Torah here today. Rabbi Horowitz was a David in the back, the tall Hasidic guy. Yeah, the Boston Rabbi is Enikel. Oh, 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 yeah. The, 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 uh, Rabbi Horowitz, he's an Enikel from. The lady is a Horowitz. Repinchus, the Balafla. Right, right. His lady was the first lady of the Sosha that was born since the. Since the, since the, since the, the Boston Rabbi, yeah. Beacon Street, Boston, yeah. Beacon Street, yeah. Brookline, yeah. Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Horowitz, yeah. You said that, so the, the Meraglim, they need this, like, Shofan Aruch, and what Chorach uh, needs uh, is... Chassidus. So, in a way... So, the Meraglim needed Shofan Aruch, and Kairach needed Chassidus, and Agutta Davinen, yeah? Avoid the Shabalev. Too much, if you're too much, like, the one is, like, when the connection is in, you need the... You can't be too much connected. But real connection to Hashem means that I go into my physical body and I go into the physical world and I change it. Then once you're there, you have to be able to have the heart. Right. But you always need taita. You always need limada taita. You always need to stay connected. Because if not, I can lose it. The wire has to be connected. You can't pull out the plug. 
If you go too far, you pull out the plug, you lose the connection. So I spoke in the Tuesday share about the ches and the hay and the kuf and the resh. It's all the same nakuda. You have to remain connected. That's why there's a void of the miracle of everybody. We have to remain in the midbar. Every day, you need time in the midbar, in the anana yakavah, to be able to go into the physical world. There are Jews who are zoicha to remain there. There's Jews. Bnei God, Bnei Reuven. There's a kohen God who never left the base of Mikdush. I mean, Mikdush lo yetze. I mean, he went home at night, but... But the old day was in the base of Mikdash. Right? The people who are Zoycha, that they could they remain in, 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 in Dalar Amas of Torah. So everybody has to know what their Shlichus is, what Hashem wants from me. What Hashem wants from me. But in your stage, it's for sure, it's still. Uh... <laughs> this class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.